Hello, everybody. Welcome to Etihad Stadium as the Western Bulldogs run under the ground. Third place on the ladder. They have been the excitement machine of season 2015 so far. Up against St Kilda, who were unlucky last week not to knock over Essendon. They played great football. They've got Lee Montagna and their skipper, Nick Revolt back into their lineup, so the Saints are going to be a very competitive team. The Bulldogs running out in a new look jumper there with a uh, caricature of a Bulldog on the side of the jumper, something new there, so it's always changing the jumpers every week here at the footy, it would seem. It's going to be a great game of footy. Let's go to Eddie Head Stadium now, where two of the greatest uh, centre-half forwards of all time are standing next to each other. Gorgeous George, and uh, that's Dermot Brereton, of course, and killer Carl Cox in Jonathan Brown. How are you, boys? Two wrestling aficionados and two of the great centre-half forwards of all time. Welcome, boys. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Ed. We've got Cam Mooney here as well. He can be Professor Tanaka. So, mate, it has been a fantastic lead-up to this game. We've got two teams that are admitted that they are in rebuild. Everything here today is doggies. We've had dancing dogs. Oh, We've got doggy supporters singing. It's all happening it's for them. It's been fantastic, yeah, and those doggy suits. Have a look at them there. What a <laughs> performance. Imagine those boys turned up to the nightclub. They'd turn a few heads. But this is fantastic. It's the first time I've seen the Bulldogs live this season. Yep. And who would have thought they'd be 4 and one to They've been the story of the season so far. Currently sitting in third position as well. Their opponents are the Saints with one win, but they're better performed than that, sitting in 16th position. Missed out on a couple of other wins. Nick Revolt comes back into the team as we look at big Bob Murphy there, little Bob Murphy, skinny Bob Murphy, I think we should call him. Revolt playing 284th. His game is uh, the 284th of his career today. Yeah, it is fantastic play. He's still their best player. Uh, been a great leader for the footy club. Still has amazing athletic ability uh, for 280 games at centre forward. Big inclusion along with Lee Montagna into the side. They'll be expecting to kick some big goals. And also, I suppose, his sparring partner, young Josh Bruce, has come along from GWS Giants as a defender, but now finds himself sitting second in the Coleman medal. Dirt. Played juniors as a forward. So it's not as if he's a total novice about it. Tom Hickey behind him as well. He's the long bailout option. Let's have a look at the Saints now. As we said, they are in development. They are in rebuild mode. This is the team they're putting out on the track today. So what we're going to do now is highlight the players who've played 50 games or less. And surprisingly so, they have only nine players who've played 50 yes. games or less, leaving them 13 who've played 50 or more. Yeah, they do. That surprised me a lot. Uh, they're well and truly, I suppose, uh, in the early stage of their real rebuild. I thought they might have been a little bit younger than that. Billy Longer uh, needs to really stand up and uh, hopefully help St Gilda get some more clearances. Here's the Bulldogs now. We see them on screen. Quite a lot of younger players in their side, term, as you see, if we flick over their games. But they've got a really good goal-to-goal -goal line, I believe. They do. Let's highlight their 50-game players or less now. 15. So they are yes. tremendously inexperienced. They only have seven players, seven players only, who've played 50 or more games. Yeah, it is. And a lot of the younger players are terrific players. Stringer and Boyd, McRae highlighted there, Bont and Pally. They've got genuine stars that are actually genuine stars of the competition. Yeah, absolutely. There's some real talent in that team. And their coach is Luke Beveridge, and he is with Cam Mooney. Well, Luke, they haven't quite got the results over the last couple of weeks, but the Saints have been pretty impressive. Yeah, they have. You know, they, they almost deserved the win last week. They were, they were terrific. So, you know, we're now in for a real struggle today, and uh, it's been our focus, you know, to get our intensity levels to where they need to be. Another big day for your defenders. They were excellent last week against two massive opponents. You've got Rewald and Bruce today. How do you think they'll go? Yeah, all well, those two big guys you mentioned are pretty mobile as well, and they, they run and so do their rucks. So, uh, big challenge for our tools, and uh, they need to work together to get the job done as they did last week. And uh, yeah, um, you know, we're feeling okay about that, though. What do you talk about as far as the mindset goes after you come off a huge win? Uh, we've always we've seen a lot of teams over the years be let down in the start of the next week. Do you speak about that? Yeah, we did. I mean, we, we can only focus on the things we can control, obviously. It's a bit of a throwaway, but that's, that's the way it is. And, um, you know, if we look too far ahead, if we look at the end of the game, what it looks like, we're probably doing the wrong thing. So we're just going to attack it this first quarter and, um, and hopefully come in and have a chat. And we're, we're up on the scoreboard and we'll, we'll deal with the second one after that. It's good to see Lockie Hunter back in. 
Yeah, it is. You know, he's worked hard to get his spot back, and um, you know, it's a sign that there's healthy competition for spots. And uh, but yeah, Lockie will come in and play an important role today. He's obviously the sub at the start, but he'll he'll come on and have an impact. Thanks, here, Tyler. Good luck. No, it's Cam. Thank you. Thank you, Moons. Thank you, Lukey Beveridge, for your time before the game here. Let's have a look. I mean, footy's no real secret. It's about pressure, even though if you are talented and on a league list. Let's have a look at their brand. That's right. Their pressure has been manic, uh, Dermy, and this has been a big reason that has set up uh, their position on the ladder to be 4-1. and one. All the players have really bought into it. We look at them last year. They ranked 13th, 10th, 10th, but switch over to 2015 and you see the ranking. Those four and a half turnovers they create and then they punish sides straight away. They go back and score. They play quick out of the back line, don't they? And it's all about getting what you want. Let's have a look at some of last week's uh, footage and seeing what the doggies wanted. They do. They get all their numbers up around the footy. Uh, a lot of their forwards get up around the ball. And you see Stuart, Ca Stu Stuart Cramery there going into Jake Stringer, who's got that whole 50-metre area all by himself. He's very well balanced, keeps his feet very strong. And then all the, the crummers get down there, like Honeychurch, like a Dale House, and they swoop on it. We see another instance here. There's Cramery again, up involved in the play. Handballs off to Jong, who's been from up the field as well. Finishes off nicely. So they put immense pressure on by getting a lot of numbers around where the footy is and opening it up for guys like Stringer and Tom Boyd down forward. No doubt about that. Uh, Sandy Roberts will be your caller after the break. But as we go to that break, we posed a few questions to Nick Revolt. Best fashion advice is probably don't carry a hanky in your pockets. It's disgusting. Oh, it's tough. Every time, every time I see the duck, I say him, and every time I see Jason Dunstall, I say him. So it's a tie between those two. Oh, I asked for the record once so I could check the bloke's name when I was playing on. First AFL game uh, didn't go too well. Uh, my parents missed the flight down, so they got there at half time. Uh, we got beaten by 97 points by Adelaide. Darren Jarman kicked six. I had three possessions and Malcolm Blight got sacked on the Tuesday. People say I look like an alpaca. Welcome back to Eddie Head Stadium. Toss of the coin with captains Murphy and Rewalt. Won by Bob Murphy and kicking to the Footscray end. Here at Eddie Head Stadium, the roof, of course, is closed. And the Dogs looking to continue the form that they displayed last week against Sydney. St Kilda looking to go one better than they did against Essendon. Let's head down to the boundary once again. And once again, it's a warm welcome to Cam Mooney. Moons? Uh, thank you very much, Sandy. Look, it's interesting. We always talk about these young dogs. Stringer, Bontempelli, McRae, and now Boyd. You know, but it's the older guys that I want to talk about. It's the old dogs. It's this man in particular, this new skipper, Bob Murphy. He has been unbelievably fantastic this year. He has, Look at these numbers. This is a guy who's 32 years of age, playing like he's 26 at the moment. All these numbers have gone up. The metres gain for me, Sandy, is the big one. He's gone up plus 100 this year. His run and carry is outstanding off the half-back line. They need to stop that today. He's had a great start, hasn't he? Cordy's in the ruck for the Dogs. He's keeping Will Minson out of this side at the moment. Up against Billy Longer. Cordy wins it, and the Dogs are away through Bontempelli, a long bomb in towards uh, centre half forward over the 50 it goes. It's going to be locked up by Cramery, and it is. <laughs> Fisher picks himself up. The Saint veteran, Bontempelli with a right arm, wins it. Taps it down, Stringer can't get clear, he's got great strength, particularly in the upper body, but he can't get away on that occasion, and we've got another ball up. The Saints welcoming back Rewalt and Montagna. That's over 500 games of experience. And they'll need it all today if they're going to have a chance against this side. Roughhead should get back on this ball for the Dogs. He does. He thought about going short to Talia, but then decides to go laterally, and that's very dangerous because Schneider was there. So too is Bruce. Pickens got Bruce. Pickens is a relentless tackler. He goes again. But the Saints maintain possession only for the moment through Armitage, who's having a fine season. They look inside 50 to Stephen, and Jack Stephen takes the mark. And he'll have the first set shot at goal, 45 degree angle and 45 metres out. Important player, Sandy, Jack Stephen, obviously, uh, along with Armitage, he's going to be their main possession winner. 
Be interesting to see whether they go with a hard matchup. Normally he gets tagged each week. He is dangerous. He can get forward and kick a goal. I think maybe Stephen's gone to him. Pretty important matchup for the dogs. 31 disposals last week for Jack Stephen. What a great start this would be for the Saints. Drifts it away to the right and it finds the woodwork. Stephen playing his 96th game for the Saints. And Murphy with that characteristic run, bringing it back into play. A couple of flyers, Cramery waited at the back. Kobe Stevens gets out, his hand pass goes astray, however, they're able to maintain possession because they've got players running through. It's Kobe Stevens again, does it beautifully to Honeychurch. Honeychurch goes for goal and sneaks it across the face of goal for one behind. You saw Webster get caught up in the traffic then, and that is Honeychurch's opponent. These dogs are looking for every moment, every opportunity to spring forward on the quick play. Stephen again is a target. Johannesson's got him for the day at the moment. Wide towards Armitage. Eastern Woods got him. Well tackled. Their tackling's been a feature. They lead the comp in tackles, averaging just over 77. This is a big part for them. They'll try and they'll work really hard. Their pressure sets it up to keep the ball in their forward half. They'll look for a quick turnover. Cordy trying to do the work from behind Billy Longer. No one getting out of that one. Long is at the bottom. And the umpire's letting it go. And eventually he's decided that someone did dive on it. And it's going to go the way of the dogs. So they run surging forward again inside 50. Honeychurch was at the back, but it's going to be intercepted. Strong mark is taken there by Dylan Robertson. Robertson comes to Rewall. Come a little way up. Joe no Word is in the back pocket. Talia on him. He goes very wide. That's going to be out of bounds on the full. And Bonton Pelly will bring it back into play. Brown, you asked before the game about young Fletcher. And at the moment, he's the one playing on Bruce, which is an interesting matchup. They're showing a lot of faith in a kid that's just playing his ninth game. Bonton Pelly looking for perhaps Stringer, Cramery, Cord. He's down there as well with some height. No one able to complete the mark. Hurried little kick. Comes back towards Bonton Pelly again. Forced onto the right boot this time, but that's good. That's very good. And now a set shot for Easton Wood, who was excellent last week. It's interesting to see. We know Nick Rewalt's obviously his first game back for two or three weeks. He's trying to get involved in the action, but I'm not sure whether uh, Richardson, Alan Rich would be that happy with Nick being getting touches up inside the defensive 50 because in a situation like that, St Kilda need a get-out option. That's what they've struggled with the last couple of weeks, that get-out option coming out of defence. Uh, the Bulldogs just set up the wall nicely. Just a little bit of an ac action going on here off the ball. Well, it's not stopping Easton Wood. He's coming in now. He's going over that action. And he's got them on the board. Easton Wood gets his first and his fourth for the season. The Dogs are away. And that's exactly what you talk about, Jonathan. He said Easton Wood's come down from the back line because they were able to squeeze up the Saints inside their back. Look at the volume of players here. And see, we watch it go back out. And Bonapelli has wonderful vision here. He's able to kick it away from the pack. One, two, three dogs. And they're all drifted down from midfield and back line to get into that dangerous space because yeah. St Kilda's numbers are in the clump yeah. between the ball and the goals. So back in the middle with Cordy and Longer. Clay Smith's got Armitage. Big challenge for him. Brett Goods back in the Dogs lineup this week. Gets another chance. Cordy goes a little early. Goods ducks his head. He was taken high, said the umpire, so he's going to take the free kick. He's got the run of Murphy, who's steaming through the middle. Puts them inside 50 once again. Looking for Boyd. Couldn't find him. At the back is Cramery. Has got to defend, however. Fisher takes it towards the line, and it is over. Luke Delaney got the Tom Boyd there. Saw him let yeah. out, couldn't quite hang on to the mark. Big matchup for Delaney. He's going to be a little bit undersized. Throw in in the dogs' attacking zone once again. 
Oh. They try and lock it up. Schneider goes in hard. He'll be trying to make amends for last week. Just want to look at this behind the footy to the right-hand side as the camera pans back. Now the couple of Saints players run back. But look at the way the Doggies are protecting. One quick kick out from St Kilda, and it'll land in the hands of the Dogs. Well, oh, well done. Bruce has Bruce. pushed forward of his opponent. Well he done. Did. His hand pass was perhaps a little low for his teammate there in Loney. They might get away with it. Schmidt's put the whistle in the mouth and love that crouch and you're gone. So the dogs a chance to go inside 50. It's a poor kick. Dribbles towards the boundary line. Going to be kept in play for the moment by Cramery. Eventually he's taken over. So too is the ball by Savage. And we've got another throw in. So what I was describing was a big win for the Saints. The dogs forward of that footy had five yeah. and the Saints only had two. And one of those two, Josh Bruce, got on the end of it. But it's still down there now. Five to two odds. Pretty good. They burrow in after it once again. Wow. Clay Smith couldn't get it. Goes out wide towards Honeychurch. He's under pressure. He's taken towards the line, but kept the ball in play. Now Rovat, round the body goes Rovat. And is the mark being paid to Boyd? I think it is. I swear Tom's going to be... Good. Yeah. Gets okay. that big body in front of his man. Well, I, 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 yeah. I look at you and Moons and think the size of you two, you, you're both huge key forwards. Have you been out next to this bloke yet? <laughs> he's a big. He's about six foot six. Yeah. He'll Every probably, bit of it. probably up around 110 kilos nearly. I reckon yeah. he's much in the much similar to the Tom Hawkins mould, isn't he? And he compliments Stuart Cramery. He'd be an inch taller. Uh, Jack Stringer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's compliments those. If he can finish the job. And he can't. I was just about to say, and Plugger lock it as well, but uh, I don't think Plugger ever missed from there. No, Plugger kick, kicked him in his sleep from there. <laughs> but what he's giving them at the moment over the last couple of weeks, he's just giving them a target, Brownie. He's just giving yeah. them a contest. The small blokes, Rovat and Hunter, now coming back in the side. Dalhouse, they know exactly where the ball's going to go. They can hit it at pace. Delaney goes long up towards the wing. Dempster is waiting down in front. Gets the hand pass away. Uh, and it's a poor one. It might open the door for the Dogs once again. It's a high ball in towards full forward. One grab, and he's got it again. That's a long way off the deck when he first got touch on that footy. It's a big stretch we were just talking about. He's 200 centimetres, yeah. which I think is, is actually six, six and a half. He's, he's triple figures in uh, in kegs with 104 kilos. I reckon yeah. they're being generous there. They're being <laughs> <laughs> you should put the other foot on, I think. <laughs> well, let's see if he can convert this time. He's directly in front, 25 out. Oh, yes. oh boy! And quite often early in game, if you do miss the first one, you can carry on and get the yips up for the rest of the game, especially for a younger player who's not used to. I suppose missing or certainly identifying why he missed and being able to correct it straight away in the next shot. Savage brings it into Fisher. So it's an eight point ball game at the moment. They can't get it out, the Saints here. And they still can't. Fisher kicks into the man on the mark. Here's danger. That was Cramery. Savage goes again for the Saints. They try and steady, but they're under immense pressure at that back pocket. Weller has it now. Weller's got a bit of time. He pops the hand pass towards Billings. Did he go too wide? He did. Well, that's a shame because now that the dogs are playing this incredibly well, but it's all about their formation, their setup, and they're going to get a chance to lock it in again. You see the big drift of players pull forward ahead of this ball here, so Saints get one more at the footy. Well, as hand passes, okay to Montagna, goes into the middle, Billings comes laterally now, and maybe switching play, they've got a chance to open something up through Fisher. Goes wide. He's got Schneider. Schneider onto the right boot. Centering ball is going to be OK. They're just on 50. Sinclair's got it. Maloney has got it, but he's... It'll test him. He's a talent, this kid, though. Loney wants to it's take fine. it off. It spears it into the pocket. And that's a good kick. He's found Schneider. When well, we saw his goal kicking last week, he didn't like it. So he gives it to Billings and he misses. Important little encroachment there from Webb. Had to come at him, which forced him to rush that kick and just overhooked it. So Johannesson will bring it back into play. He's given them some good dash this year. He yeah. has. He's done that for most of his career, but now he's got real licence. Him and players like Lin Jong, who's not with us today. Dalhouse is another one that springs to mind. 
Cramery, a long way from home, gets the hand pass away. Clay Smith, if it sits, it doesn't sit for Smith, but he traps it eventually. Gives it off once again towards Rovan. He's under the pump. Now Cramery, they pounce upon him. Nunes is on top, and the umpire says, I'll have it. And he's got it on centre wing. And it looks uh, a, a lot more dangerous for the Bulldogs. They keep their, their forwards back. Uh, yeah. That time, Jake Stringer and Tom Boyd were back inside 50, even though the ball was down the other end. With St Kilda just a little bit uh, out of whack at the moment, their forwards are coming too far up the field. Dunstan to Stephen was good initially for the Saints. Now Honeychurch's hand pass to Kobe Stephen. Lands with pick, and that was quick. Tory Dixon's got it now. Penetrating kick towards Boyd. Territory once again gets one hand to it. It's a test of strength with Delaney. Delaney gets in front, going towards the line. They trip over, they go to ground. Dempsey couldn't take it out cleanly. It's still at the bottom with Gary, and the umpire's going to come in and take charge. Hey, Moons, at, at ground, from up here, I would suggest that what we're seeing at ground level, it looks really pacey, it looks really hectic. Manic pressure to up and down, and you look at the inside 50s as well for the Dogs, 9-2 to two at the minute. They just are. They're playing the game in their forward half. They're making it hard to come back out. This will come straight back in here. Dempster to, to Armitage initially, but it didn't last long. The smother was OK. Saints may get a chance to clear it out, but they're under enormous pressure. Haven't got Webster any, court. Haven't got anyone forward to the footy. Bruce has had to backpedal. Schneider's had to backpedal. Now they've got targets, and they're still only 40 metres away up the line. Dunstan's got the free kick up against Goods. They may come to Delaney. They do. So from one pocket to the other. Now the positive here, Sam. Uh, uh, sorry, Sandy, is that they've actually withstood, and they haven't been damaged on the scoreboard amidst all this unbelievable pressure the doggies have put on them true geary's got it on the wing he's got montagna who's just come off the bench okay, he can run the line and he does he has a bounce he needs a mark up there at full four but he hasn't got it a uh, nice court he drops back the ruckman he gives it off to talia and the dogs are out of trouble that's a poor kick over and it's going to be costly armitage is taking it and that one also doesn't find its mark it's taken by webb a young left footer he was taken 27 in the draft goes wide towards the wing boyd was there he still is armitage tries to steal it but runs out of room and runs into mccray we've got to throw in so the two coaches there on screen luke beverage been uh, well talked about this season in his first year as coach, Alan Richardson in his second year, doing both doing good jobs, I believe. Oh, good pace. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, Hannison out once again. Uh, look down towards full forward. Where's Stringer? He goes to ground. He looks at the umpire for a free kick. He doesn't get it in opposition to Dempster. Dempster gives it away, and the Saints are out of trouble once again for the moment. Stephen loves to run. Does so now. From the back pocket. They're almost down towards centre wing now. Oh boy. Not a lot up forward. Rewalt's very wide and he's run too far. <laughs> Bad luck because what he really did was very brave then, Jack Nance. He, he was under real pressure and he wasn't willing to just release the ball and have it come back over his head because of a cough up. He thought, I'll take it on here, I'll hold the ball, buy some time until a target develops for me. Bad luck, son. And a good chase by Webb, who now goes with the left foot towards Bontempelli, who's forced to spoil from behind. McRae's waiting down in front, gets through heavy traffic, but his kick is wide. No right foot. Very, very wide, yeah. Head of right foot then, he was away to the right centre of the ground and he gets an easy snap. Uh, dominating play, the Bulldogs, and uh, St Kilda have got no options forward, as I said before. The forwards are getting too far up the field for the Saints, so when they do come out of defence, Saints uh, defenders and midfielders don't have, have anyone to kick to. Dempster comes from the back pocket. And it is Ruffhead who sees it over the line in opposition to Hickey. Part of the reason, Sandy, is because St Kilda have been getting smashed in, in the clearances the last four weeks. I think they're putting extra numbers around the clearances to try and win the footy. Uh, obviously, uh, the forwards are suffering with that. Hickey doing the ruck work. Goods was at the bottom of the pack. It gets thrown out towards Pickin, who goes onto the left boot. Just flicks it round the body. Puts them inside 50. They're lurking once again, these dangerous dog forwards. And look at that tackle. It was a ripper. It caused the turnover. And the goal is kicked by Stringer. And the dogs have got another one. 
I'm glad he's kicked that goal because that long ball that came in, he bustled the two St Kilda players who were underneath the marking contest. He bustled them sideways. So it's not as if he's just got on the end of a little bit of someone else's hard work. When the ball first came in, he was the one who gave them a real contest. Now watch this. Watch his body on Dempster and Robertson and pushes it down front and centre, but then keeps hunting up. He's still on the back of the pack. Now he keeps moving forward. Well done. Super effort. And that was a feature of his and Cramery's game last week against Sydney. That just was. sheer persistence. He's a powerful unit, isn't he? Is, yeah. And he get get balls at ground level. He's just got a he's got a bit of grunt in too. He yeah. doesn't mind getting stuck into the opposition and. So the margin is 13 points as Kobe Stevens copped a nice old push in the back. Play goes on. Savage, a chance to clear it. He gets the hand pass away. They're under all sorts of pressure at the moment. Here's Nunes. Difficult hand pass. It wasn't a good one. Cramery with brute strength rides the tackle. Gets it to Kobe Stevens off to Eastern Wood. Now they look forward. A long kick. Inside 50. Off. Oh, it was almost a falcon off the head of Bontempelli. He applies a late tackle, causes the ball to spill free. Well against claim. Ripping tackle by Tory Dixon. Boy, as Moon said, it is tight down there at the bottom. Roughhead gets a hurried kick. They're back inside 50 once again. Only momentarily as Hickey takes a good mark. Gotta slow it down. The doggies want to play at a frantic pace. And yeah, go quickly if you got this type of run out of the back line, but gee, don't play into their hands. This is McKenzie. Oh, and a clever tap on out the back to Billy Longer. You've got to get down, Billy, and pick it up. Eventually he leaves it to Bruce, who gives it to Schneider. They're doing it the hard way, but they're getting there slowly. Dunstan needs a kind bounce, but he's going to be beaten by numbers here. And it's Murphy who gives it to Pickham, and they're out of trouble once again. Gee, Murphy and Johannesson's pace by foot coming out of the yeah. back line is really troubling St Kilda because they can't run them down. It's a major bonus, isn't it? Tory Dixon, Oily put Goods under the pump, but he's going to take it back again if it sits. Well read. It doesn't. Bontempelli will go in for it now, then a force to apply the tackle, which he does well. Hickey, his gang tackle, he's taken the ground by Cramery and Co, and there'll be a ball up. We've got one down behind post. Savage. It looks like Savage. Yeah. Have a look at this, we'll watch him. Oh, he gets a clip from Just the a elbow. Clip of the elbow there, Dan. He's he's rattled by that. Oh, yeah. Oh, his head, he's a bit wobbly, is he? Yeah, he got one on the on right there. here, I reckon. Yeah. Temple, right here. He might need a bit of a test here. Might have and a 20-minute break. Oh, yeah, he did too. Just right beside the ear. Yeah. Clever tap. Clay Smith leaves it for Kobe Stevens. He goes into the attacking zone once again. Boyd tried to apply a tackle. Wasn't successful. Weller could have caught one in the back from Pickin. No, said the umpire. Talk about the pressure that the dogs are putting him under, though. It's not just the tackling pressure inside 50. It's their long kicks at the moment. Had 16 long kicks to three, so they're really just getting it in there and putting this defence under pressure. There's another fine tap to Stringer. This time from a standing start, he pumps it way to the left. Won't mind. Out of bounds in the left forward. They won't mind that because their pressure is so good. It's actually a real bonus here because it allows them now to set up to lock yeah. this ball in, and their pressure is going to give them... Well, Maybe multiple shots on goal if they don't kick it first up. Cordy doing the work from behind. You've got a hand to it. Montagna. That pressure. Had it for a moment. Lost it. Nunes also. Goods a snap at goal and he's kicked it. That, that pressure. Welcome back, Brett Goods, for his first goal of the season. And we talk talking about the pressure, and obviously they've got really good tackling numbers, but it's the way they tackle too. They tackle to dump. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they really, really physical tackles. They're just not jumper tackles. You see here, look at that bang. Crunch, there's another couple of guys hit the deck. Two or three St Kilda guys end up on the deck there from really strong, aggressive Bulldogs tackles. Got to hang on here, the Saints. This is a real storm. And while everybody's got real energy, real vibe about them, they've just got to hang in here, the Saints, and get through this period without too much more damage. Three goals, rough three goals down at the moment, 19 points. Already six scoring shots to two. Sandy, Shane Savage is just doing a little bit of walking on the boundary here. Doesn't look too flashy. His eyes just don't look right at the moment, guys. So I'll keep an eye on that one for you. Good on your moons. Yeah, you might have to take time out as it's belted off the ground down towards the, the Saints forward line, only as far as Murphy and co. Murphy and Joe Henderson combine. 
Murphy goes, goes even wider. Dangerous to Goods. He's going to have to get his skates on now. Dunstan oh, is playing. That is awesome the, pressure. The pressure is fantastic. And they're out of strife once again. Up towards centre wing. Now, if Saints can hold up to this, it's a big feather in their cap because this pressure is as good as anyone travelling at the moment. This is Fremantle-like. This is, this is absolute top of the table. A pre uh, pressure applied to opposition. And the other thing, Dermot, there is... Oh, oh look at that. Great Magnificent fly top. by Boyd. This kid's really building in confidence. No, let down confidence. by the youngsters from last week's big win over yeah. Sydney. Just didn't you say this guy was third in line at the Giants, Derm? <laughs> <laughs> he's third in line in that pack too, but he's taken the mark. And he goes along. Cordy is a flyer, but he's forced to defend. Honeychurch was waiting down. He had a number there. Armitage. Let's fly with the hand pass. They're under siege at the moment in defence. They can't get out of it. The Billings hand pass back towards Armitage. Now Nunes up towards Rewald. Rewald's on centre wing. He's a long way from home. Just calm it down. Oh, he's got 50. But what he needs to do on that one, because the dogs... Look at him on the right-hand side of screen. They actually, as soon as Rebolt marked that, he swung around, looked forward, and there were two St Kilda players, a three with the doggy. So they were outnumbered, and more dogs arriving in the scene. So that's where he needs to slow down. He's fortunate, he got the 50, now he gets a shot to hit the scoreboard. And if they can hang on, if he can kick this truly, and hang on here, just hang in there and only be 13 points down, yeah. around two goals, it's not a bad effort, given how well the doggies are going. Three goals for the season, 622, make right that up. 623 for his wonderful career. So the skipper gets his sides first. They trail 1-2 to 3-3. Three, three. They, they are hanging tough. We'll, we'll, we'll give them that, uh, St Kilda. I just wonder whether they're better off. See Nick Rewald here, just let up. Nice, easy one on the chest. I'm not sure that 50, so you can just see Johannesson came through, yeah, came into close. the exclusion zone. That was a definite 50 metre penalty. Sounds like good stuff. Talking about shipping lanes. Yeah. Like the exclusion, <laughs> right. zone. exclusion zone. <laughs> He'll be happy with that because we know that uh, Rui can get the yips up, but he's kicked the first and he's away. Look at this. On the front of the square for yeah. the dogs, nobody comes up to the square. So if they get a quick break, the ball carriers can run all the way to the chalk and, and here they get go. in there. And there it is from Cordy. It's a high bomb inside 50. Bontempelli couldn't quite take it on the chest. Dempster defends grimly. He's not on his own. Delaney is there as well. Just Eventually, it's Kobe Stevens who hands it over. Sorry, Sandy. I just wonder with two Ruckman there whether St Kilda are better off playing a loose Ruckman in defence just to help out. Well, Cordy wins it. Down yeah. to Nunes. Robertson. Dylan Robertson's away. Thought about the kick, but then decided to go wider towards McKenzie. Yeah, just, just to help out there, they're getting a, uh, they're bringing a lot of forwards up around the stoppages, and that's really hurting them when they do go forward, because they've got no one to kick to, whether it's better to use up Tom Hickey or Billy Longer when they are playing forward, maybe switch them around and put as a loose man in defence, because Bulldogs have got some big, dangerous forwards. Just under four minutes remaining in this frantic first quarter. Tory Dixon claim. Pickin. McRae leaves it. Quick hands again. Yep. Dixon had another opportunity. McRae goes in hard. Longer is with him. So too is Nunes. Schmitty comes in to bounce it. Hey, Moons, the hands are so quick by the doggies. That's not by accident. They have to train for that, don't they? Well, they've been doing it for the last three years, haven't they? I mean, this is a, this young group. They've come through together. They've trained for the contested ball. They've trained with the situations around these contests. This hasn't happened over the last 12 weeks. It's been a, a progress in, in place over the last three years. And now it's just coming, coming through brilliantly. Webb had an opportunity there, but lost it, but he's still got numbers around the ball. One of them is Clay Smith. The Smith hand pass, OK. Good's a little toe poke down deeper in towards Dixon territory. Nunes is under pressure. Ripping tackle. One hand held. Oh. He's got to be pinged. Oh. He pinged the one arm. It was Nunes perfect. went to ground onto his knee, so he took out the option of kicking it, and the other arm was pinned for the handball. He didn't sense the occasion, the umpire. Perfect tackle. <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah. From the ball up, it's taken towards the line. Clay Smith had it, lost it. Pickin is there as well. Jack
Jack Stephen tries to make meterage. He does, but the ball wasn't held initially by Montagna. Okay. Back to Stephen again. Geary, hurriedly onto the left boot, out of bounds on the fall. <laughs> That's Jeez. pressure, pressure, pressure. This is hot. And I'm, I'm pleased for the Saints too. This is a real yeah. good test for them. Watch this tackle. He goes to ground, takes out the option of kicking it. Oh, yes, that was old. <laughs> yeah, that's one he'll get reviewed on the other. Well, let's hope it wasn't Schmitty. <laughs> Couple of minutes remaining. Montagna in the thick of things once again. Still inside the 50. Cordy hand pass, partly smothered. Here's Easton Wood. Gives it away now towards Murphy. They go inside 50. McRae was the target, but he couldn't complete the mark. Schneider has it from half back. Goes wide. That's okay. Towards Fisher, who kicks towards Montagna. He's got two big targets ahead, and they're one on one. Decides not yeah. to pull the trigger. He's just going to take a bit of heat out of it and go long now to Bruce. He gets shepherded out of it. Good team yeah. play by Doggies. It's going to be belted down to Webb, who's on his right side for his left foot. Up towards Wood. He's been very good. Uh, centering kick is also excellent to Pickett. Pickett had 33 disposals last week. And he's going to go straight down the middle, long and low. Boyd's at the back. There's that loose man. They, they put the ruck in behind play. Get it, job in a coach's box too yeah, soon. Yeah, right. if he could do that. Kick it towards Webster. Easy. He goes wider to Stephen. He's, Billy Long has got a good matchup down the line. Elects to go shorter. He's still got that matchup long. Just drop it on his head. He's got Bob Murphy. He'll, he'll reach about three foot higher than him. <laughs> well, there's oh, the kick. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, he's laying it out there. And eventually it's seen over the line by Fletcher Roberts. Hey, just a quick one down here, guys. Savage is still in the hands of, of the doctors. And I think they're going to try and let him go to a quarter time at least before they come up with a decision. But he's walked around the boundary a couple of times, still shaking his head, so I'm not quite sure if he's going to be back on or not. He's got just over a minute to go, Moon, so we'll see if he can uh, get through that and then look to the second quarter. Here's an opportunity for the Saints to get a late one. And they do! Schneider! Hero one week, villain the next! Same spot. Exactly the same Would spot. Would they prefer this one or last week's? I reckon last week's because it was late <laughs> in the game. This is a good result by the Saints. So this, by all, by all terminology, Brownie, yeah. this is a really good game. I know it's not a huge score, but it's so full of pressure and the Saints are standing up to it and still in the hunt. They are very good. Billy Long has been able to get forward there and create a couple of really good contests in that last 30 seconds of play. And good to see Schneider still sneaking forward to kick goals. He missed an absolute shocker last week, but he's been spending the majority of his game time now in the midfield. It's still important that he gets forward and contributes to the goal scoring effort. There's Savage sitting on the bench. The doctors will be trying to talk to him, get him to count backwards from 100 and all these sorts of things. Hopefully he can get back out there. Gee, I had some teammates who actually would have struggled for that when they were lucid. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen from Dempster. You would have Stephen Sperry pass to Schneider. <laughs> I did. I had a bad host to carry the times tables with me in the countdown <laughs> yeah. sheets. All right. Here's Schneider to Longer. Couldn't complete the mark. It was smashed away from him and taken over the line. Schneider, incidentally, turns 31 on Tuesday, so the little veteran's doing well. They've settled the Saints. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've stood up to a, a fierce onslaught of pressure. Look at that Tom, time in forward half. 72%. Yeah. <laughs> the Tom Boyd, two misses mean a bit now, don't they? Correct. Hickey pokes it down. What would he be thinking now, Dermy? That uh, young forward, you missed a couple of shots early on, just hoping you get another opportunity to wipe that away. Well, I'm, I'm never one for this kick through the ball. Kick the way you want to kick, but whatever you do, don't lean back and baby it. Punch the ball through. Pass it through to somebody in the crowd, but punch the ball through. I think the clock's going to beat the Saints if they're going to try and get another score on the board. Seconds only as it goes towards Cramery. Good quarter of footy. And Really Excellent good. quarter of football. A grand contest. The honours with the Bulldogs, but the Saints are right there with them. It's quarter time. The Bulldogs are 3 3 21. And the St Kilda Club, 2 2 14. Dogs lead by seven points.
total of 24 players out there that have played under 50 games. And boy, are they putting on a contest here today at Etihad Stadium. It's the Dogs that lead. But St Kilda with a late goal are right back in this. Three goals, three, 21 to the Saints, 2-2, two, two, 14. Uh, Armitage and Stephen, prolific ball winners for the Saints once again in the thick of things. So too is Liam Pickett. But uh, a time in the forward half is just staggering. Wow. If they can keep this up, we are in for a big afternoon. It is super to watch the doggies, how they're going about it. And I've got to take my hat off and dip the lid to the Saints as well. They've conceded 20 inside 50s at the bottom of the page and yet only given up three goals. That, that in a, a small way is a win. Extrapolate that out to four quarters. 80? Yeah. 80 inside 50s? Well done, Saints, standing up. And wonderful, wonderful pressure by the doggies. Particularly forward half pressure. Oh, yeah, they're, they're good forward, forward half the ground. Well, that's where the traffic is. Yeah. Have a look at these tackles, too. And they're, they're strong, aggressive tackles. We spoke about it during that first quarter. Look, dump, dumping tackle for, by Bond and Pallady. Bond and Pally Stringer runs in and kicks a goal there. And the Bulldogs have missed a couple of goals. Another one from Bond and Pally there. All the aggression in the tackles. They just get so many numbers around the ball. And they really fit a lot of these guys as well. That's why they can keep turning up time after time. They showed that last week against Sydney Swans. They were able to go for the whole four quarters. There's Dixon one. who's had a really good start. That should have been holding the ball. Yeah. I just did feel they might have even used the ball, overused it in the back half of the ground, the Saints, just on a few occasions. Well, they didn't have options to kick to. Uh, a lot of the Saints players, especially their forwards, got too far up the ground, I believe. And I think towards the end of that quarter, they decided to go away from that and put a ruckman beyond the ball. Yeah, it was extraordinary. Well, let's go down to Cameron Mooney now because uh, Richo is just about there with him right now. Thanks, thanks Sandy. Richo, you guys absorbed a lot of punches then, didn't you? You did really well by the end of that quarter. Yeah, 20 entries to seven. We're certainly not going to win a game of footy like that. Our backs were, were pretty good. They were able to hold on. We just fumbled too much moons. We've got to, we've got to be stronger in the contest. What about Savage? What's the news on him? Uh, so he's out of the game at the minute. The guys will do their concussion test. That's 20 minutes. We'll have to wait and see then. Thanks, mate. Good luck. Thanks, mate. So into the second quarter with Longer and Cordy to get proceedings underway. Cordy again goes a fraction early. Good snatch. Uh, it's taken away by Bontempelli onto the right foot, down towards the 50. Stringer, gee, he's a hard worker. Second and third efforts outstanding. I was just thinking that. It's not many quarters of footy that the team goes in 20 times and only gets three goals. Yeah. <laughs> Dempster clears to the outer side. Geary takes it well oh, towards Rewalt. Got a little too far underneath it, and it opened the door for Talia, and it opened the door for the Dogs. They're away in towards uh, the 60-metre line. Goods is running past, so he says, give it to me. And Goods goes towards Cranberry at the back. He may let it bounce. It bounces the wrong way. Pressure on Fisher. He dropped the footy. That's the tackling, that's the pressure, and it's continuing. Yeah, he, he saw off the immediate opponent, and then he just like, came out of the darkness. He came out of the shadows once he saw off Cremary. <laughs> Where'd he come from? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Little Nathan Rovac. Uh, oh, that's Luke Dalhouse. Uh, Luke <laughs> Dalhouse, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. In good disguise. Yeah, yeah. And he just he's sneaks it home. Missed it, has he? No. No, no, he's got, got it. it. He's got it. You know what's unusual about that? I wouldn't want another look at it from that angle. I don't reckon he kicked it above the hands of the man the on the mark. He kicked it beside, beside it. it. Yeah. Beside it. That's a very fortunate one here. Great tackle, good pressure. So we see Fisher pushes off Grimeri. Yeah, got him. I can see him. <laughs> Where did he come from? Just need to offload it there to Jack Stephen, who was yeah. in support. Nearly missed that goal. He was lucky he was in so close. But the big forwards are the Bulldogs. They bring pressure to the table as well. Finished off by the little fella, Dale Haas, who, who spent a lot of time in the midfield this year and had a lot of the footy. He's had averaging 25 possessions a game. It's his fourth goal for the season, Luke Dale Haas. Longer wins it. Who can take it out of the middle? Yes, no one. Jack Stephen, always found at the bottom. Honeychurch there with him. Bontepelli, third one up. Armitage. 
right to the outer side. The ball was touched, so Stevens has to play on, and he's got to beat a lot of numbers here. It's going to come back, Jack, and he's going the way of the dogs to Honeychurch. He plays on quickly. They've got players streaming down the ground. Goes back once again to Honeychurch. Kicks into the man on the mark. Now an opportunity for the Saints. The kick by Fisher was poor, however. And it's going wide to Eastern Wood, and he's got a panic. He can steady. Have a look downfield. Go long towards Stringer at the back, but he couldn't get a run at it. Robert and hand pass to Armitage is OK. The pressure continues, but they're out of strife for the moment. Now Geary runs into trouble, gets caught, not before he gets the hand pass away. Loses it to Cramery. Cramery gives it off to McRae. McRae spears it in towards Woolford. Once again, it's chopped off at the last minute. Fisher takes it laterally. Good coverage by the doggies. They could have, if he had it got out there a, a half a second to a second earlier there, Montagna, they could be down the field already, but the dogs pushed over and covered it up. Good run here by the... By the same as oh, well, he's going to give it back to Schneider. And Rewalt at the back takes the mark uncontested. Wants to play on. He's got a player on the other side of the ground. Wouldn't like get there. Oh. And he does. Great spoil by Easton Wood. The ball sits up for him. He sneaks away from Billings. And now the dogs have a chance to go forward. They've got loose men screaming for the footy. Cramery was in the middle, but he goes short to McRae. Just did not punch the ball flat enough through to his target there, Revo. There's a free kick yeah. going the way of Goods. Yeah, he's time again. I think he would have gone back and had a shot there, Dermy. Yeah. They, they only lay it off if that guy is definitely in the clear. Stringer a target. Honeychurch is wide. He goes short in towards uh, Cramery. And Cramery has taken a mark. 49 metres out directly in front. They're not afraid, the Bulldogs, to go for those passes uh, right in, very centrally inside 50. Now, if that ball turns over or doesn't hit its target, St Kilda are going to go straight down the other end and score. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've done it a couple of times. Did it a couple of times. Bon and Pally, we saw in the first quarter, was able to hit uh, one of his teammates. Another really good pass there. Cramery coming in for his first and his seventh of the season. Weird. Oh, he's away to the right. That might be worth asking um, Moons. Uh, I think that's what Luke Beveridge has done. He's came in and he's really uh, freed the shackles uh, with the way the Western Bulldogs move the ball moves. Yeah, no, absolutely, Brandy. They really have. It's, it's fantastic. Well, he's just watched this here, this replay there from Mr. Wood. Incredible. But he's yeah, absolutely right. I mean, he just he's brought this still, just take the game on. I mean, it's exactly what they're doing. It's exciting to watch. Unfortunately, they just can't finish with their goal kicking. OK, well, Kobe Stevens has got a chance to send the dogs into attack once again. He gives it off towards Johannesson. Johannesson gives it to Cramery. Cramery gets another oh, chance. He gets another <laughs> chance, and he takes it. Even though it was off one step, it was a big circular wind-up, and he just, just swung the hips through that kick. I've got to say one thing, though, about the young lad, Johannesson, he's doing some serious damage off half-back line. He and Robert Murphy... Just so damaging with their pace. Watch this run as well. Bang. He's left. Is that Billings trying to chase him here? Can't get to him. Good kick off the one step. Yep. You're right. It's a really good point you make, Toby, because this is where most sides get their offensive drive from is if you've got some good halfbacks that are quick runners and really good kicks as well. And in the Bulldogs, they've got Wood, uh, Johannesson, and Robert Murphy. And Lin Jong, who's Lin missing Jong. today. Yes. And he is like lightning. Here's Armitage out of the middle. Can the Saints reply? Armitage towards Bruce. Oh, well, he must. Directly in front, 30 out. Good start by Armitage. He's the leading possession winner on the field. He's up to 18 possessions already. He's had quite a few of them in tight, but he's also a very good kick. He leads the league. Uh, uh, he does lead the lead. Or he's very high up in the league for uncontested possessions as well. Josh Bruce is second in the Coleman. Looking to get his first for the day. needed goal for the left footer but he's pushed it away to the right it's been some ordinary goal kicking today Sam. He certainly has at the moment everyone's got the yips up so he doesn't add to the 17 goals that he's kicked so far this season murphy straight down the middle cordy will be late on the scene he's at the back cordy uh, but he's not on his own kobe stevens almost was taken high the umpire calls play on the hand pass was meant for Dixon, didn't quite have the distance. Pickin, he does some heavy work in close.
craze there as well. Picking again, Kobe Stevens, Bontempelli, Dunstan for the Saints. Longer and Cordy once more. Bontempelli, third one up. Just pumped out of the air. That was by Sinclair. Uh, Rewalt's at the back. He's got a swing round or affect the hand pass. He decides on the ladder. And Murphy's going to bring it away. Slightly off the pace at the moment. Oh, he's always oh, hurt. Smith is down, and that looks serious. He might have come down and hurt his knee there. Well, he's bounced up almost as quickly as he went down. Well, it's really hyperextended, almost. Oh, no. You're protecting the right one. This might be a couple of issues there. Hopefully it's only he's damaged the cartilage, but hopefully he hasn't done the dreaded ACL. Well, right, he's... Moons, young you'll be all over that. coming off uh, two knee reconstructions, guys, so fingers oh. crossed for this young man. Uh, so in the meantime, play goes on. Just keep us informed, Moons. I know you will. Cramery, clever, towards Johannesson, pick and look out. Stevens. McRae's going to get belted, and he does. Turnover, costly. Hurried kick by Loney in towards full forward. A chance for Schneider. Couldn't take it cleanly. Too much pressure. Johannesson out the back door. He does it well He's to pick. This kid. Oh, that is brilliant. Off to goods. Gee, they're looking good. Now McRae. Stringer running with him. But he's got a weight. He's got a lot down there. Eventually McRae hooks it with a left boot. A lot of St Kilda Guernsey's there. How's the bounce of the ball? It's good for goods. He gets claimed. Goes to ground. Not before Honeychurch gets it out to Bonton Pelly. And kicks into the square. Who is there but Stringer? Once again at the other end, Sortale, he coughed up the mark, but he read the play quicker than the, than the champ, Nick Revolt. So, tells me, and Revolt will pick it up soon, it might be in a minute, might be in 15 minutes, but he never gets out red for the footy like that. Stringer gets the goal, that's his second, six last week, remember? And that is the dog six, 6 3 39 to the Saints, 2 3 15. Yeah, a couple of things that were noticeable. Going back about 45 seconds, yeah, there's the contest in the middle of the ground. And well done. I mean, it's right. fantastic that McRae is going to keep running. Look at this. You just see Tom Boy though. He's leading not great leads Correct. there, Dermy. He's yeah. leading back inside the footy. Made it a really tough kick for McRae. They end up getting away, away with it. But Luke Beveridge wouldn't want the kicks to be landing there. A much That's just work. Kill. That's but work. And is. having yeah, having done a bit with Tom in the past, yes, we're encouraging him in the past to always get out into the McRae, was it McRae who was bringing yes, the ball forward? Yes. Into his vision, which had to go to that far flank. They win it out of the middle again. Up towards the 50. Honey Church had front spot, but couldn't complete the mark. They go to ground, it comes out towards Dalhouse, who gives it off to Tory Dixon. Is this another one? No, it's wide. He's looked dangerous, though, Tory Dixon, around the play. He's been tackling really strongly. Had plenty of the footy himself. He's had 10 possessions already. Just want to tidy up that part of his game. Look, there is no target down the line here for the Saints. They've got, they've got a midfielder having to go for the ball and a full back. Looks as though Savage could be right to come back on. Uh, is that a correct assumption, Moons? Well, I am looking at him right now, Sandy. It does look like he is going to come back on. And just quickly on Clay Smith, he has gone down under the into the room, sorry, just to check out the one with that knee too. So fingers crossed for him, but looks like Shane Savage, guys, will come back on. Thank oh, picking out the back of it, squeezes out to him, he's at goal. Stevens almost taken high. Rovat, a fierce little tackler. Good umpiring. Yeah, let it go. Stevens locks it up until it gets absolutely killed motionless. Just want to be very careful here. Our man Johannesson just lurking off the back of the packs here. <laughs> you see now uh, Billings has gone up to man him up. Hold. Cheapers. We'll be looking to get a handball off here. Yeah, big ace. Kicking from 55. Just goes to the top of the square. No one able to get a real run at it. Dunstan. Claim. Cramery steals it. Goes on to the left boot once again. Boyd caught out of position. And Montagna takes the mark. He's tucked in the back pocket. The Saint veteran of 234 games now. Plays on, goes short to Weller. Weller thinks about Jack Stephen short as well. 
eventually goes laterally to news. Every player is in the back half yeah. for St Kilda. So if they want to kick a goal here, it's going to be a race goal at the other end. And I don't know whether they have anyone with the foot speed to beat the likes of Murphy and Johannesson on a quick break. Oh, Robinson's oh, kick was dangerous, Armitage. but Armitage got there in time. Now he comes wide to Billings. Billings is away with a hand pass to Stephen. Jack Stephen's kick is a worm burner to Bruce, and he put him under a bit of pressure. Bulldogs free kick for a trip, so Stringer has it, draws it to Johannesson. Back the old one-two, he takes it from Kobe Stephen. Almost down to the 50 now. Opportunity for Dalhouse. Ooh. Oh, Lukey boy. Well, it bounces back in. Extraordinary. He may get another chance. Still in play. Goes back to Kobe Stephen. Pumps it high. No one at home, however. Only Goods. And it was a two-on-one battle. Moons, down to you. You've got some news. Well, I've got some good and bad news. Fred uh, Savage. Fred Savage. Shane Savage down here. <laughs> Looks like he's got the red vest on. So he had a fantastic poker face. So I thought he was OK. So he's been red vested. And Clay Smith's down here doing some agility along the sideline. He looks OK. Thanks for that, Moons. And we're just getting an idea of the pressure that the Bulldogs are inflicting here at the moment. String will be the flyer. He's got it. Well, if we saw, just going back to Moons, a wonderful mark by Stringer. If we go back to Moons, we're saying Savage. When he took to the field, just stood on the side and looking to come back on, he looked at his medical officer who was in the pink shirt and he was saying no, shaking his head side to side. Savage would have been saying, can't I go? I'm good to go. And he would, and he's overruled him. He said, no, I'm not going to let you back out there. Yeah, spot on, Doug. He, he desperately wanted to get back onto the field. Stringer for his third. A very slow, deliberate approach. Remember, he kicked six last week. Oh, he's just snuck at home. He's got it. He's got it. They've got three, and now the Dogs have got their seven. Now, look, have a look at this for a mismatch. Uh, he would have been rubbing his hands to get the jug screen. He ended up on Jaron Geary for quite a while before this. Now, we watched the ball goes out. A couple of risky handballs by St Kilda. Eventually, Lee Montagna realised he needs to try and clear it. Gets it out there. That's a poor kick. We look down here closer. Look at Stringer. So, thank you very much. He's on Geary. You're backing nine times out of ten. It's actually very kind to Geary as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little bit of a Barney going on here, boys. It's been a free kick. And it's going the way of St Kilda. This is a dangerous time for the Saints. They've added only one yeah. behind so far for the quarter. The Dogs have poured on four goals. Plus, good boy. Well done. Uh, that was well done. Good pace. Good McKenzie. Good McKenzie's away. Onto the left boot. Rewalt trying to make position. Couldn't take it at the back. And the Dogs would, should try. No, oh, the kick went short to Armitage, but he couldn't complete the mark. McKenzie gets another chance. Here's Clay. And they whipped over the boundary line. That's Armitage. And we've got a throw in. Well, just, just see a little bit off the ball. Free kick here, guys. Uh, Cordia was just running into the back of him. Bit of a whack there. But you just talk about inside 50 tackles at the moment. Look at, uh, look at there, the Dogs, 20 inside, 50 tackles to one. That's where the pressure, that's where the game is right now. Weller runs into a brick wall. That's an amazing stat. You know, up around 12 plus for the whole game for inside, game. 50 uh, tackles. Yeah. They're already up to 20 with, you know, virtually 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Armitage picks himself up. He's already had 19 disposals. He's been a real workhorse. Dunstan with a left foot goes around the body, but Mark in the last line of defence by Talia. Talia goes wide, switchy play, he's got Goods and McRae. Been running through the middle. Cramery, he picks out Goods, he gets through some reasonably heavy traffic, just dodging and weaving, up towards Cramery. He's covering plenty of ground, but he's got pace, so too is McRae. He's at the 60 metre line, kick wasn't a good one. Geary watching that sail to the line, and right on his hammer was Lukey Delhouse. Oh, he's Shane Savage looking very dejected. He's finished for the day with a red vest because of the concussion. Very rarely now you see the doctors clear a player to go back on the field yeah. uh, after they cop a head knock. Well, that's a worldwide yes. status, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Err on the side of caution. 
doubt about that. As much as you want to fight the doctors yeah. at the time, they are looking after the players' long-term health. Here's Pickin. Just swung around and then just kicked a bit of hit and hope, really. Down into that forward line. The line was, sees it over the line. There was a time when they used to go, shh, don't tell <laughs> anyone. <laughs> Times have changed. Gee. Throw in in front of the scoreboard that's looking pretty healthy for the Dogs at the moment. Can they keep it up? Can the Saints come back in towards the boy? Clay Smith is there. Honeychurch is there as well. All lurking, waiting. Nunes gets claimed. Not before he gets it to Armitage. He picks up possession number 20. It's a poor one. It's a very poor one. We talk about this current day and age, there's so many standards in football which never change. The pressure, your ability to, to run, chase, tackle, all those types of things. But in this era, kicking is king. Yeah. And Armitage forced onto his non-dominant. It's the most important quality in the game. Yeah. To, it uh, is called uh, football. Kicking, that's right. Kicking efficiency. All junior coaches need to concentrate on that when they're training up their juniors. He's a chip off the old block, isn't he? Pick it. Kicks better than the old man, though. Yeah, nice. yes. Don't let Billy hear this say that. <laughs> he's got the goal. He's my first cousin, Sandy. Uh, so I'm up for a lead. He's had a fantastic start to the year. Started his career as a tagger. He prepares as hard as anyone. He's super professional. Uh, I think he counts every calorie that goes into his body. He's got a, a young family. He had twins last year that were quite sick. Uh, so that's certainly made it tough when it comes to preparation. This year, he's probably been able to focus a little bit more on his footy, and his form has followed that. And he's been able to get forward and kick some goals as well. That's a beautiful kick from a tough pocket. I wonder, Derm, if he talks on the field like his old man did. <laughs> Here comes Puffing Billy. Oh, I used to play against Billy. Yeah. He was my, yeah. one of my idols as a kid, Billy, and I got the absolute privilege of playing against him. And uh, by quarter time, I wish I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's two cough-up kicks, and that'll get called call back. That's two cough-up kicks by experienced Saints in that yeah. back pocket. Yeah, they're starting to fatigue too from all this physical tackling pressure. Longer wins it against Cordy, but they've got to take it out of the middle. Weller tries. He uh, lost one. He got taken high, said the umpire. Now he wanted to get it off quickly to Armitage, but uh, the umpire pulled him back, so he's forced to go to the other side and Jack Stephen. Stephen wants Rewalt and Bruce. Rewalt's do you see? Yeah. You're about to say yeah, the same thing as me. You, yeah, you go with it. No, well, it's just interesting. They, they, what they did, the St Kilda forwards, they crossed over ahead of the ball, and the, um, the Bulldogs defenders got confused, and they end up losing their opponents. And Nick Rewal was able to get it out in his own by about 20 or 30 metres, uh, and, and then virtually take an uncontested mark down. Two key forwards, both went to the one spot. Yeah. So Rewal for his second. across the face. Uh, we're going to be kept in play momentarily. Billings, right on. good tackle. But at least they have the off. communication to not fly against each other. You don't mind the guys. At times, you know, key forward's going to come together, but they need to know where each other is. Wall up once again. Oh, that's out of bounds on the full, I'm afraid. So he doesn't make too many mistakes, young McRae. But he has on that occasion. And the door opens for Roberton. Or a draft pick. Interesting sure. to read in the paper today. It was either him or Ollie Wines. And I think both clubs would be pretty happy with that selection. And Jack Stevens kicks marked by Easton Wood. He's brave in the air, Easton Wood, isn't he? Yeah. He'll come back with it. Cramery. And they're running it out once again. Here goes Bobs for Jobs. Up towards Stringer, who's got absolutely nothing in front of him. So he goes to Tory Dixon, waiting for players to stream oh, down man. the ground. Jeez. Jeez. That was hard. Kobe Stevens came in one side, Geary and Nunes the other. What a highlight. Thankfully, they're all up. Oh, what a, a highlight. Man. He's, he's oh. put him into a 720. Oh, watch he watch him spin. Bang. Oh. He's done a 720. <laughs> Twice around. Oh, that's as brutal as football can get right there, boys. Oh, yeah. That was almost thrown out. Bondapelli overruns it. Opportunity for the Saints through Loney. His kick is not good. Rough hit, but doesn't get a kind bounce. Could have get a free kick, however. Not a bad free kick to give away. It slows them down a bit. That was against Hickey. 
six goals, and the game's still exciting. Yeah. Four and a half minutes remaining in the first half. He's got them inside 50, and almost an uncontested mark on that occasion. And well done to Chips Fisher. Plays on to Dempster. Swings play to the outer side. Now ahead of the ball, the you've Laney. got Bruce and Revolt have both led to the same spot. Delaney short to Armitage, short to Longer. Just trying to move the ball, a bit more composure now. Back to Armitage, who's racking up possessions. That wasn't so good, however. He's racking up possessions, but he's only going at about 50% Correct. with his disposal efficiency. Correct. Dalhouse was the one who took the mark. They go deep into the forward line again. And Kobe Stevens takes a fine mark. Well, just to put that into perspective, Armitage has had 23 possessions. He's had 10 kicks, and only five of them have hit the target. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you expect a lot better from your main mid midfielder. That's why sometimes possessions are overrated to him. Kobe's not a goal kicker. Still. <laughs> Still looking for his first goal of the season. He's got the blackest eyes in the world, hasn't he? Yes. <laughs> Kobe Stevens. He's had a pretty good start of the game. He's involved in that yeah. collision before. That's why we're attracted to this great game. We, you know, when, play, when people say that you know, the game's not as hard as it used to be, as it's as hard, hard as ever. Yeah. It's a different type of hard. Particularly with the pace that's now involved in yeah. it. Well, the players now are full-timers. They're in the gym three or four times a week. Sandy, uh, they've got sprint coaches. They're bigger, stronger, faster. So the collisions are going to be heavier uh, and more physical than they've ever been. Nunes. I don't know if you ever run into Plugger, but it's pretty <laughs> hard to imagine they're getting bigger. Yeah, that's a good crack. Well, Tom Boyd, the way he's going, he might be as big as Plugger. <laughs> so, Rewalt outgunned on that occasion. And just about every player in one half of the ground, as Wood goes long, penetrating uh, kick. It's got to be a free kick. Yeah. I'd almost be inclined right now. And he's got the big knee right in the back here, guys. Kobe Stevens, uh, yeah. Out of all the hits, he's got the knee that's dropped him. <laughs> I'd almost be inclined, probably well, get right to half the time. Too, I yeah, he's a bit of strife. To move Nick Revolt out of the forward line. Play him on the wing, play him at half back, yeah. get him out of the forward line at Why? the moment. Play him in. Play him what? into a bit of form, because when it is getting forward, he and Bruce are confusing yeah. which balls they're going for. Ooh. And he's out of touch. That's got to hurt. That has seriously got to hurt. He's probably a little bit stiff, though, there, Dempster, because Stephen was certainly going, looking back to block him. He uh, might swing through this. could have been a kick the other way. He mightn't swing through this correctly here because of the pain in that back. Mm. It's amazing what a goal can do. It is amazing. Quite lucky. I think he was lucky to get the free kick. Could have quite easily have gone against him. He's a chance to get subbed out of that. That, yeah. Yeah, that was a really hard knee right in the, the top. Looked like the top of the glute, maybe lower back. Watch this from this angle. Bang. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you'd be riding to work yeah, on that. Sandy, morning. you're actually feeling your <laughs> back where he got hit. I'm feeling the he's coccyx not a, bone. He's not a voodoo doll. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you just yeah. know how much that yeah. hurts. He's a chance to... Have that seize up for the rest of the day at some stage. It's one of the worst feelings you get when you get copper whack in your coccyx bone, <laughs> in your tailbone. Yeah. The problem is just before half time, that's going to cool down. That's going to be really hard to run out after half time and get warm again. So we've got a seven goal ball game at the moment, but as Dermot said, it certainly doesn't feel like it. Johannesson's going to charge them into attack once again. Puts the hand pass out in front. Cranberry gets the skates on. He's got too much pace. Has he got the accuracy? Yeah, no, he has played well. the way to the right. He's given, uh, he's given Sammy Fisher a bit of a run around today. Oh, Cranberry, he, he's, you've spoken about him being really quick, Sandy, but he's also got fantastic endurance. Yeah. He used to be a terrific 400 metre runner, I believe. Uh, and he's one of the forwards that can get up the field for the Bulldogs and, and still be able to get back inside 50. Uh, they've got a good balance, I think, you know, with, with Stringer um, with Stringer and Big Boyd down there as well. They're all a little bit different. They're key forwards. Yeah. They supply something different to the forward line, yeah. each, each and every one of them. Armitage. Use the ball. Possession number 24. Stephen. Dunstan it was towards Webb. Couldn't take it cleanly. Bruce is on him, but not before he gets it out to Easton Wood. Talia. 
Just backpedaling a little. Fletcher Roberts goes to ground, gets another opportunity. Did all right there. Back to Roughhead. To Johannesson. Now he can run. And he's smooth in his run as well. He kicks right. up the wards, pick a magnificent disposal. That's the difference. Always Armitage misses the target, gets scrappy, it gets turned around. Johannesson at 100% too, Danny. Yeah. He could have caught one, Clay Smith, but the umpire says play on, so Armitage gives it away to a teammate there in Sinclair. That's what he does do well. He bulldozes through trouble. Only as far as Easton Wood. To Talia. And he gets through with ease. Pokes it up in towards, uh, well, just forward of the centre. And Bontempelli goes in towards full forward. Guess who's at the back? Pickett has taken the mark. He's clutching the knee there. Clay Smith just did his knee again, guys. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, this is a sad, sad story. This well, is this horrible is... for this young man. He's done it twice already, this fella, and he's such a great kid. You just hope that he didn't partially uh, do his ligament in the first incident, Moons, and they've sent him back out there. Well, you turn and go for that marking contest just before. He actually couldn't jump off the ground, and... Yeah, there's, there's no doubt, Brownie, that, uh, that that contest a little bit earlier has ruptured something for him. Oh, the, well, yeah, they're going to have to get the stretcher yeah. out. This is going to take time here, and Pickens still got to have the shot. But <laughs> the what? crowd saw the incident on the screen a few seconds ago, and that's that big. Oh, you heard from the crowd who, who also sense this terrible moment. This is the first time. Let's go back in time. And have a look at this first marking attempt. Lands on the right. Yeah. And that's the typical way guys can sometimes do their ACL. So you just wonder whether there's been any damage done. This is... Watch him in the middle of screen 14. Oh! oh gone again. So he hasn't got contact, which is, you know what? In a way, that's even worse. Yeah. That shows there's a definite weakness there. Oh, yeah. So you just wonder whether... Was there damage done... In the first incident there, Dermy. Uh, and he's gone back out in the field and finished the job off. We certainly hope, best case scenario, that he hasn't did the ACL, but it certainly looks like that. Lucky Hunter mm. will go into the halftime break, still with the green vest on. And they'll uh, probably say, all right, warm up, seriously warm up, you're out from minute one in the second half. Well, let's, have, let's have one more look at them in back-to-back -back here, Sandy. Yeah. Springs off it. Knee there. Yep. Doesn't touch the ground with that knee again. So I reckon, I reckon you're on it, Brownie. He's, he's tweaked it. Now watch here. Goes to push off that leg or put weight on it and cannot. And that is, you describe that as innocuous. Well, that's got to suggest to you that first incident. Yeah. It certainly had a bearing. Yeah. It weakened something. Well, you can, something. that's right. You can, with the ACLs, you can partially rupture them, uh, and guys can still function okay, uh, and then end up with a full one. Obviously, you're not a doctor, but there's been cases of this happened before. So he's taken from the ground, and uh, I'm sure Cameron Mooney will give us a, a full report as soon as he gets some news on this. In the meantime, Pickin has got a shot at goal to make this margin out to eight goals plus. It's been an exciting quarter by the Dogs, that injury aside. They've kept St Kilda to just one behind. Pickin now deserves a goal. The goal umpire does not move. And they're all in here. It's an all-in. This old fashioned Sandy. Yeah. Well, look, and look at you rubbing your hands. <laughs> well, that, 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 that really did escalate quite quickly. Where's Derby? Just... Get Derby oh. back in here. <laughs> it, it, did, it did happen, Moons, very quickly. Oh. Because as well, soon it as was young, young Jackie Stringer yeah. went straight up to Rewall and gave it to him after the goal, and that just erupted it. Okay, well, all it means is that probably both clubs are going to have to get out the checkbooks. That's not what they want. They've got to focus on the positives. Positives for the Western Bulldogs. Some work to be done for St Kilda as Rewalt leads them down the race. But let's check that halftime score. A great quarter of football by the Dogs, and they lead 10-4, 64.
McPherson killed it. 2 3 15. Amazing end, as I mentioned. Sir Killer adding just the one behind. But we've got a great game of footy in. Well, it's all happening at Eddie Head Stadium. A bit of. Welcome back to Eddie Head Stadium. The Saints with the job ahead of them. Managing just one behind in that second quarter and having to try and handle an onslaught from the Western Bulldogs as they piled on seven goals one. And the Dogs, of course, losing Clay Smith. And we just wish him all the very best. He's had a rough road in a relatively short AFL career. That was just game number 34 for him. But let's see what the Saints can do in the second half. Or are the Dogs going to continue this extraordinary rejuvenation? Leading by 49 points, it's the big number 49, Ace Cordy, who's going to start them off in the second half. Up against Longer, it's a perfect bounce. Longer got a hand to it first, picked up by Montagna. Goes quickly down towards the forward line, but no one at home, and Roughhead takes an uncontested mark. Plays on quickly to Talia. And he goes short to his skipper in Murphy. Interesting setup down the forward line for the Saints already, Sandy. They put Rio up onto the wing, which Derm said they may need to do. But then straight away they get a kick inside 50 and it's intercepted. Yeah, that's an interesting point as Kobe Stevens appears to be OK too, Moons, after a couple of really heavy knocks in that second quarter. Yeah, he's a bit of a battering ram there just before half time, wasn't he? <laughs> Takes a good mark on the outer wing and has a look up towards the half forward line. There is Cordy, front spot. He's making it tough for Big Will Minson. He really, look, that's, the, that's the one they haven't been able to get over the last couple of years, that one down the line. Yeah, Boyd was a target here, but Delaney nips in front, gives it off to Jack Stephen. He goes short to Rewalt, who's in the true fullback position, off to Dempster. Dempster's kick goes towards Bruce, who's been pretty quiet and pretty well held by Fletcher Roberts. Over the line. So just in the dogs attacking zone. Longer tries to get front spot. Rewalt, third man up. Dixon, Webb. His hand pass intercepted, however, by Sinclair. Goes down towards Hickey. He lumbers after, then almost took Roughhead high. He's going to get away with that, but I think he's a little fortunate. Have a look in replay, and there was definite holding on to from Hickey. The play goes on. That's a good tackle by Armitage. Longer tries to get through towards Dunstan, couldn't do so. Bontempelli excellently done towards Cramery. Now he's just poked this one out in front of it. Sits are going to be all right. This is Lockie Hunter, the sub, who's come on to replace Smith, and he kicks beautifully. Stringer is the man he's found. He's going to be kicking from just on 50. Tough pocket, though, going for his fourth, Sandy. Yep. But he's had a good couple of weeks, and this is no exception. <laughs> what a kick. Boy, oh boy, he's now got four, and the Stringer Show continues at any hand. It is the Stringer Show, Sandy, no doubt about it. He can do everything, this kid. Uh, he can take a big mark. He's quite quick on the lead. Uh, he's very good at ground level, and he's a good kick for goal. That is probably one of the hardest pockets in the AFL to kick from here at Etihad uh, Stadium. Uh, but all around the league. Wonderful kick. Quite often it drifts to the right uh, from this pocket. But he just ran out there. He got out to the right enough to open up the angle. The ball did fade a little bit, but it had already gone through. Jeez, he's exciting. He's, he's really below exciting. his knees, isn't he? He, is. he never falls over. Never falls over. You see there... He's a big, strong lad. He's got the big backside. Built like a D9. Yep. So, back in the middle. Montagna gets it out to Dunstan. Partly smothered. He's got to go again. It was thrown out. So, it's going to be a free kick to St Killer, but it'll have to come back. And Sandy, just looking at uh, Kobe Stevens at the moment, he has a serious limp at the, on at the moment. You did call Lockie Hunter coming on for the sub for Clay Smith, and what a better way to get your first kick and hit your best mate on the chest. Yeah, indeed. Dunstan. 
straight down the middle. Not a lot at home. And Cordy has no trouble taking the mark. Rough heads under pressure. He's going to give it back again. Oh, Honeychurch could be in trouble. Well done. Natalia. I'm going to focus on... Uh, Joshy Bruce has got to, going to focus on that kick that went into the forward line then. You've got Revolt and Bruce basically leading out of each pocket. So either side. And where'd the kick go? Right down the middle to the rest in Ruckman and didn't favour either key forward. Josh Bruce has had a quiet day and has missed to the right. They're alarming the inside 50 stats, 42 to 18. It's going to make it really tough for Nick Rewalt and Bruce to get oh, many opportunities. Bob, you're in trouble here. Hickey's got him. Well done. Good effort. Well, well done. Good against the quick yeah. little halfback for you. Now, Bobby's had a word to, <laughs> to the umpire here and said, but I've got fist to it. But if you elect a to take on <laughs> the player, you have the time in the tackle before you're penalised. I reckon if a ruckman gets a hand on you, you just got to give it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the ball. <laughs> Speaker C. Mooney. This is no lay down. Yeah, he's well, got good boy. It. He's got it. So Tom Hickey gets his first. And finally, the Saints, it's taken a long time getting their well, third goal. A little bit of spite in this, Sandy. Uh, we saw it just before half time when everyone uh, on the field except for Moons was in the blue. Uh, and it's still carried on just after half time. Yeah, there's a little bit of niggle. There's Jake Stringer down there. Oh, have a look at this. Murph will, uh, this will make the bloopers tape at the end of the year in Mad, on Mad Monday, I think. <laughs> Getting tackled by a ruckman. He won't hear the he won't hear the end of that. And gets up and lets the umpire know that he got a fist to it. He's going to argue that one. I agree with Moons, Dave. You allow the ruckman to tackle you, and you're a nippy little defender. You deserve to be paid holding the ball against. I like your logic. Well, let's see if the Saints can string a couple together. Some sort of a challenge now in the second half. That'll have to be taken back. Dogs have only got a couple of multiple goal kickers. Stringer with four. Goods with a couple. It hasn't stopped them sharing it around. Cordy tries to use his strength. Rewalt leaves it for Armitage. And they're out now. Forced wide. That was by Webster. Schneider. Tries to give it back. Rewalt Let's looks like he might be up on the wing, Sam. Yeah, right. as Dermot suggested uh, before half time. Hunter was there, but he couldn't take it. Armitage could. Uh, charging forward once again, Geary. Poor kick. Dogs have got the numbers once there again. But they're not out of trouble yet. They are not out of trouble. Locking it up was Jack Loney. Well done by the young man. And just at the other end, coaches are inclined to let some of their experienced backmen fight it out. But I've got a feeling he's uh, Richo Swap, Fisher and Dempster around on Cremary and Stringer, respectively. Billings to Armitage. He's kicked the goal. Well done. He gets his first. Another big week for him. He had 35 disposals last week. Already, Dermy's up to 31 today. I can find it. And as we're progressing on his kicking efficiency with this type of disposal, just creeps up. Good effort around the corner to match Stuart Cramery's effort in the second quarter. Uh, left footers, but he, he want to get it up at 46%. He's going out at the moment. He just needs to use the ball a little bit better. He's finding plenty of the ball there, David Armitage. It's been a high position winner all season. For the Sainers, he's in the leadership group now. They've got Revolt at the far side of screen on the wind. So they've cleared him out and allowed Josh Bruce and Hickey to go the way they did last week when they worked so well in tandem. Cordy wins it down to Hunter, who kicks up towards the half-forward line. Uh, the Saints are dribbling it back, though, towards the middle. And Schneider gives it off to Geary. Geary goes wide into Billings. He's 55 out. Gets underneath a punt. It's high. Difficult one to grab. An effective spoil is by Murphy. He did it really well. Now Pickin sweeps it even wider. Pressure is on once again for Johannesson, but he's equal to the task, and so is Murphy. He says, I'll take him on again. He gives it to Lockie Hunter. Hunter backpedals, gives a little room. Well, they've got time to steady, size up the options. And that was an interesting attempt to mark. <laughs> Johannesson couldn't take it cleanly. Now they got the half forward. Hunter wants 
once more is picking up possessions at will to Rovat. They want it down there quickly. String is going to be the fly. And eventually it's Jack Stephen that sees it over the line. Oh, that so was Gary Moorcroft. Yes. Oh, He's trying to do a chest mark here, boys. You need the hands in this one. Oh, I've said it a couple of times. He's got a bit of that Gary Ablett Senior build about him. And a bit like Gary Ablett Senior when it came to the jump there. <laughs> he would have got paid that, Gary Ablett Senior. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> well, he did, didn't he, yeah. remember? <laughs> well, he's an excitement machine, though, is Stringer. Is Talia well in front? Well read. Marks in front of Hickey. Yeah, he's got side-on action here. If he goes right across Murphy, he's actually said no. no. Top of screen. And no, go in now. That's where he's going. A big pack of players. And uh, guess who's out the back? Stringer's out the back and he misses. Oh. I like, Boy. I like too how he uh, he doesn't fly for the balls all the time. He just weighs it up, sees how many guys are in the pack. Sometimes he stays down and his man flies for the ball. That's why he gets some opportunities at ground level. Jimmy Webster brings it back into play. Well, it takes a good mark. Oh, he's, he's got to give it up. So he got a little bit of action in the back yeah. before the ball came yeah. in. It's stiff. So the dogs pump it inside 50 once again. Could have almost picked out a free kick. Now here's Rewalt in defence, setting up the hand pass. What have they got downfield? That's the question. Not a lot. The race is on. Talia's going to try and claim Bruce. Well done. Not before he got it across to Hickey. He tries to poke it wider, and he does. Well done. Oh, God. Flicked around the body by Loney. That see, was that, clever. That is already Revolt going to the wing, who worked hard in the back line. If Revolt's in the forward line, he knows where that ball's going as well. He gets there, he takes his opponent there, and whereas Josh Bruce just had one opponent to beat, he would have had three other men to go at if Revolt still plays in the forward line. Let's see what Jack Sinclair can do. He misses to the right. With, the, with that move too, Dan, what's made? It's made them smaller. It's made yeah. them more mobile. It's made them quicker. It's made them quick on the ground. They're tackling down there at the moment. Three tackles inside 50 this quarter to zero already. Now, Bob, what are you going to do this time? <laughs> He's not going to take that chance again. <laughs> <laughs> Finds his mark at Johannesson, who comes to Hunter. On there now. Oh. They're just... They're just... Oh, look, Revolt's an all-time great, and he's going to go back down there next week or whenever, but they just look to have a little bit better shape about them now, the Saints. Opportunity there for Dalhouse. Good under the puck from Stephen, loses it to Montagna. And his hand pass, just a little errand. It was meant for McKenzie. Goods goes again. A little bit of aerial ping pong. Stevens short into the pocket. That's going to be OK. And Billings has another opportunity. Well, he had well up in the middle of the ground. He's a beautiful kick of the footy. Not, yeah. not a big fella and doesn't have a huge boot, but good enough to get the journey from here, and he's got very good touch. Still looking for his first for the day, but he's kicked three already this season. Here's the left footer. Well, that well, that close. A good strike. Jeez. That's a great strike. Thank he's you. now got his first for the day. He was starting to use the ball a little bit better, St. Kilda coming into the forward line. Uh, we saw a couple of minutes previous, uh, there's a really good kick went in there. And then this last kick inside 50 was delivered beautiful, beautifully to uh, Jack Billings, who we just see here, we watch good tackling pressure, We've certainly up the tempo after half time, St Kilda players. And we get it across there, they keep it alive, keep it alive. Good fight, good persistence. Jack Stevens just a little one around the corner, found Jack Billings, and this is a terrific kick by the left footer, just snuck it inside the near post. If there's one area of the St Kilda list they need to address in the last two years, it is real ability, top-end talent. Billings gives them that foot skills. Oh, that bounce just passed. Well done. Rovat. <laughs> now here they go. The race horses are away. Ooh, Momentarily. Oh, hang on. Johannesson landed awkward and he's been pinged for holding the ball. He ran into a hole. Something happened very strangely to him. Yeah. And that's finished over the line. He's been dynamic off half-back. That's his first yeah. mistake for the day, really. Watch this. Look at those wheels. He slipped. Oh, yes. <laughs> the cleats wouldn't <laughs> hold. <laughs> Retreads required. 
So from the throw in, Dunstan tries a little tap. Cordy gets it out but loses it. Montagna on the end of the hand pass. Here go the Flyers. Oh, that's again. a free umpire. Not going to be paid and taken over the line. Climbed over Josh Bruce from the, the back there. Watch this. Oh, <laughs> Can you not what? say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Let's move on. Rewalt from the back. Bondampelli, a short kick. Good to Wayne. Now they've got a little bit of time. Honey Church, be careful. Back pedals to Pickett, who spears a pass. That was good to Dalhouse. Dalhouse goes backwards to Johannesson. Will he decide on another run? Or oh, he'll switch play to the outer side. And he goes long because he's got a player out there all alone. And that's good. That was Fletcher Roberts. He goes down the wing. And the race is on once again. Inside 50. Stevens is there, but so too is Boyd. Boyd is claimed by Delaney. Runs out of room and taken over. Getting a look at Kobe Stevens at the moment. Remember we called before oh, yeah. half time. Can't can't move. That will have yeah. him subbed out. Terribly unfortunate Clay Smith gets subbed out. He is having to stay out there for rotations now, but that knee to the back buddy, he cannot, he can't jog. Poor girl. He's out of the goal square now. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he'd be leaving the 30 metre arc. Yeah. He can't. Even if he wants to, he can't get it. He's trying to chase sideways here. He'll come into screen here, so the bottom of screen. And he he's going to man this one up. Watch him run to it. <laughs> oh, is, oh. It was always going to happen after half time. He's always going to cool down. And as soon yeah. as that happens, you can't get over there. Oh, Geary, Geary was a target. Mark should have been paid to Honeychurch. Dogs fans not at all happy with that. It's an interesting one too because Jack Stringer and Tom Border want to be back in the goal square, but now <laughs> Kobe Stevens is going to have to play there. Oh, we're having These a laugh. These will have to get to work. They have to get up the field and run around. We're having a laugh, but as we've all had it done, and God, it's it's better somebody else having to deal with it. Oh yeah. Bonton Pelly, not comfortable. Inside 50 <laughs> towards Stringer again. Now Dixon is there for the assist, and they might require him. Dempster's working hard. He's up against three, Dempster, and he did pretty well. Tory Dixon spins out, gives it across to Goods. He's going to be caught from behind. No, he's too quick. So he goes long towards Boyd and Cramery. Cramery scouts. Cramery's caught. Goes to ground. Armitage tries to get away with it, and he does. Comes clear, finds Dunstan. Goes back once again to Armitage. Gets his kick just in time. Saints have lifted. This is Schneider to the outer side. They can get another couple here. Who knows what could happen in the final quarter. Bruce is a target. Oh. Couldn't complete the mark. He was on his own for so long there, Sandy. I couldn't get it to him. And that's going to be a little too wide. So once again, the Saints have a chance of charging in to attack. Under nine minutes remaining in oh, this sorry, third sorry. quarter. And it's almost a Sunday stroll there. Uh, perhaps oh. not the correct option. What should yeah. I do that? That was a no. poor decision. It would have been a shot from 40 metres out. Yeah. Unfortunately, they decided to go over the top of Jack Stephen on a really tight angle. Bad decision there. So Kilda's starting to get back into the game, though. They've really lifted their intensity around the ball, applying tackling pressure, and starting to use the ball better as well in transition. Three goals to one this quarter in favour of the Saints. It's a poor option by the Bulldogs. Just Fisher. been a little bit rusty with their kicks the last couple of minutes, Sandy. Yeah. Fisher's kick puts the Saints inside 50 again. Bruce is under the pup, could have dropped it. Honeychurch tries to steal it. He's got a battle royal with Jack Sinclair going on there. Now, we often see when players run to an up line scream, I'm being held, blah, blah, blah. There is a time, if you're just Bruce now, you're going to go to the umpire and say, watch for the blocks, watch for the shepherds. That's coming back. And the umpire's obligated to have it in the back of mind. There is a time. It's not just barracking talk. You've got to put something into the umpire's mind so he yeah. does watch for the illegal tactics that are happening. Mackenzie goes short. OK, to Fisher. Fisher just pokes it up to try and accommodate Rewalt. Dogs have got the numbers at the back. That's going to be tough for McRae. He's, he's played it cleverly. He's got himself a free kick. 
And Moons, when I was uh, down there with you at halftime as I walked off, knowing Shane Savage from the old Hawthorne days, he's still glazy-eyed. He is still a little bit out of it. He got subbed out before halftime for the Saints yeah, as well. Yeah, look, as even when he was laying down here, just as he came off after he copped the knock, you could see it in his eyes that he's just starting to roll a little bit and they just weren't right. But he was trying to do the poker face and play the cards and trying to get back on with the doctor overall. Rewalt to Geary. He goes laterally. Saints just trying to mount something here through Dunstan going short. Got a Go good down kick. the line. That's a good kick. What they're doing now is getting a little bit of ownership of the footy and that manic pressure when the dogs play fast and heap it on, pour it onto the opposition being St Kilda, it just denies them any access to quick play and, and hard pressure. Well, the chip was on. Uh, Weller was a target. Dunstan was there as well. Weller got a hand to it. Johannesson couldn't take it cleanly. Sinclair is there now. He's found a free kick. It's a high Ooh. tackle and it's going against the dogs. And it only looks like he's been fortunate enough this, with this reception. And once again, yeah. as I said, with the list address over the last two years, they need talent by foot. This kid can yeah. seriously kick it. It's in good, very good hands. Start to use the ball better towards him. And all of their goals, or certainly their shots on goal in this third quarter, have been created by this tackling pressure. They've had three forward half turnovers, four fifty turnovers now. Sixth game, looking for his sixth goal, and he's got it. His first for the day, but number six for the season. It's a good return, isn't it? First yeah. season. Yeah. You're a young man. You're just out of the under-18 competition, and if you can get a goal a game as a uh, probably only minutes per game he'll play in the midfield he plays a little bit of high half forward but as a small forward in the up the front end yeah take yeah, that one that's that. a free yeah. they just they've been a bit more composed with the footy uh, and you can just tell there's no doubt the message from alan rich in the half time just be more composed take your time with the ball instead of being frantic and rushing all the time start to use a little bit more short possession they're doing that and obviously lift the tackling pressure around the footy They've been able to combine those two things together, and that's got them back in the game. Four goals to one for the quarter in favour of the Saints. Couple and of clearances. Armitage and McKenzie combining once again. Getting a clearance wide to the outer side. Schneider takes the mark. There's a player running past and uses him now. Gee, if they could get a couple more before the three-quarter time siren as that ball goes over the head of Dunstan and over the boundary line, we could be in for a big final quarter. Who knows? Yeah, they've scratched it back to 29. And we saw the disparity in the time in forward half in the first half. But look at it now. St Kilda 68. Doggies 32%. So they've swung it on its head. Yeah, I've seen umpire got dropped in play there. Hopefully uh, one of our cameras was able to pick it up. But he's been absolutely flattened. Yeah, Schmidty just having a look over his shoulder. <laughs> Which one of you two has hit the deck? Yeah. It's good umpire, Justin Schmidt. Rewalt did the tap work, but uh, Bontempelli is the player who's come away with it. Down towards Boyd and Delaney. Boyd now tried to tap it on. There's going to be a free kick, and it's going to go his way. It's been a good contest between yeah. Luke Delaney and Tom Boyd all day. It has. He goes short. Oh, oh, here he is. Stevens, here he is. <laughs> he won't make the distance. He might be able to swing the leg. He's battling to walk. <laughs> Let's see what he can do. Do you reckon the fitness boss would be so cruel to make him ride the exercise bike on Monday morning? <laughs> can you imagine, you know, when it, when it comes time to get that blood clot out of there, oh. the first 30 seconds of that massage into oh. that blood clot. Oh, look at the pain. Oh. <laughs> Can't walk Come straight. Come on, Cope, see if you can do it. Tight angle. <laughs> They've still did action. <laughs> Drifted it across oh. the face then behind. Ever had one of them moons? Dustin Fletcher gave me an absolute beauty a few years back and um, yeah, couldn't walk for about two weeks. Oh. I don't think you're the lone ranger from Fletcher. He was the best Adam Fletch. Yeah, you, you had a teammate who was very good at them as well. Nice. Matty Scarlett. Oh. <laughs> yes. Tell you what, that's bad news for Kobe Stevens if you couldn't walk for two weeks. <laughs> uh, but to the outer side, well done by McRae to get there in time and affect the spoil. The, the Bulldogs aren't even really manning him up either. They're just letting, <laughs> letting him go. <laughs> well, they, they, they can shut him down fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah. 
from the throw-in. Just under four minutes remaining, picking round the body. Goes in towards full forward, Boyd's at the back, they've got a hand it in front. Tory Dixon is there, tries to flick it, may get another chance. Bontempelli is there, Jack Stephen right there with him. Saints under real pressure once again, but they're going to get out of it. This is good. Comes good wide run. to Weller, he's got a runner in Armitage. Armitage sneaks away from Johannesson, no mean feat. Down towards the half forward line, a chance for Bruce, go to the Brewster. Gets boot to ball, got a shove and is going to get a free kick. That's, that's a natural play. Advantage, yep. And the goal is there to Dunstan. Good umpiring. For a second there, Sandy, I thought he was going to say, no, let's haul it back. But there was no impediment on play. It was a natural flow onto the ball. Now, you see this structure in the St Kilda forward line. The space when they run back in there now, this is what they've been used to over the last three weeks. And moving Revolt up onto the into the middle of the ground has cleared out space you've only got one opponent one key opponent to beat he gets a little nick on you as you kick it but it's still in motion and incredibly we're back to four straight kicks I, in this I, game and you could if they make a real fist of it even from here you will put it down to the fact that in the first quarter that St Kilda back line was under siege 20 inside 50s but they only conceded three goals so, a bounce of the ball may favour Pickin out of the middle. He wants goods. Easton Wood provides the shepherd. That was good. Up towards the half forward line. The dogs need a steadier. McRae, it sits for him nicely. Swings around now and hooks it with the left boot. But, gee, hooked it fiercely. Yeah, a little too yeah, fiercely. Yeah. Yeah, just been a bit away with their kicking in the last few minutes. Uh, but St Kilda, they've set up well. They're getting all their numbers down the field, except for Josh Bruce. They've really left him one out. He's got, he's giving young Fletcher Roberts the run around. He looks like he has pretty good endurance. He does. He's a good, a good athlete, Joshy Bruce. Yeah. He'll run all day for you. And rewind over the top of his court. who tried to get it out. He's got ping. Well, there's no question that move of Rewalt is really opening him up yeah. down that forward line. It's been a great move. He's got young Rovat on him at the moment, so he's trying to push forward here and get this mark. Well, they're streaming down the ground. Rewalt is sprinting after that ball, but it's a somewhat tired sprint. He has a chance to pick it up now. He does, but he needs assistance. Gets it into the form of Hickey. Hickey gets a quick one to Sinclair. It's a high ball, straight up and down. Difficult one to grab. Bondon Pelly goes with the fist. It's Webb who tries to flick it clear once again. It comes back to Roughhead. He couldn't take it cleanly. Now they've got the numbers on the last line. This is a stringer. Important ball, though, otherwise it'll come back. There was no one further downfield, so the Saints, through Fisher, should be able to go back. And he does, finding Dempster. Still two and a half minutes remaining in this quarter. Still a chance for the Saints to close the gap even further. And there's a good mark. Armitage is running past Geary. Armitage will flick it with the left boot. In towards full forward. they got someone at the back. They're going to get a goal. They have. And it's Sinclair. Jack Sinclair gets his first. Game on here, Sandy. It's, Indeed. It's a... Uh... And St Kilda just getting their hands on the footy. They've had about 100 possessions to 60 onto the Western Bulldogs. Kicked six goals to one in this quarter. And St Kilda have been able to take out the Western Bulldogs' prime movers, especially Easton Wood and Robert Murphy. They've only had three possessions between them this quarter. There you notice there, Brownie, five players. The ball's yeah. around the middle of the ground, and the Saints kept five players within 20 metres of their goal square. Yeah, they did. Uh, that was probably the first time they've actually gone to the top of the goal square. They've either been hitting short targets or forward half turnovers. That time they attacked the goal square, but they had numbers like you said, Demi, which is all right. What an extraordinary turnaround. The Dogs booting seven in the second. The Saints booting six so far in the third. Well, I got a hand to it. Cramery ran into trouble in the form of Fisher. They go out the back door to Goods from a standing start. He pumps them inside 50. Who's holding who? And it's going against the Dogs. Suddenly things running with the Saints. They've got Stephen Wide using him now. Jack Stephen. Still on the defensive side of centre. With a minute and three quarters to go. He's going to make the switch. And he does. Going across the ground. That was to Webster. Webster goes to Dempster. And they're just taking their time, setting it up. So the Doggies have now said to Eason Wood... You come up out of the back line, play as a winger, play defensively against Nick Revol, who's now on a wing. Geary. So they've lost that third man up expert they've had in the first two quarters. 
Geary comes back to Dempster. So it's a double switch, if you like. And the Saints have got the numbers again here because Montagna's just back. And he's out the back door. Away goes Joey. Two bounces. Down the centre wing. Nunes provide the shepherd. Montagna goes down the line. That's a good kick. He's got Bruce. Here's an opportunity for Sinclair to Bruce. They are finishing Boy. real strong and real hot, Sandy. So, That's Josh great. Bruce, a chance to kick his first and to come within 18 points. Oh, I can remember being a kid and only allowed to go to Moorabbin on the train and, and they had the animal enclosure and they used to hoot and howl and they'd get on an emotional roll and they were unstoppable. It's just got the slightest feel of that at the moment. The old animal cage. <laughs> He's lost only his emotions due to alcohol and due to everything. Now, big kick. A big kick for the Saints and Josh Bruce. And he's got it. He's, oh, he's, he's got, got it. it. <laughs> and they come from everywhere. And we have got a game on our hands here. It's a seven-goal third term to the Saints after a seven-goal second term by the Dog. Dermy, you should be sitting in the coach's box beside Alan Richardson. Call, you called Nick Rewald to go to the wing. And that has done what did wonders for the St Kilda side. Now, we see this build-up. This has been the difference for St Kilda as well as their pressure, but they've used the ball with a lot more composure here. They've used shorter possession. Instead of blazing away like they did in the first half, Montagna, good composure there, picks the right option. He knows he has Bruce deep, one-on-one. -on -one. Goes short to Sinclair, who is then able to then hit Bruce on the lead, which is an easier kick Didn't than what he... it would have been if Montagna had a bombed it long Didn't to Bruce. Didn't Sinclair turn well? He did. Well, yeah. he, he knew that Bruce was free behind him. Seconds only remaining. Seven seconds. Murphy ripped into the ground by Rewell. Easton Wood holds it up. It is three-quarter time. The biggest comeback from half-time is 52 points. Are the Saints going to break that? Because they're coming back from 49. We're all set for a big, big final quarter here on Fox Footy. The Dogs lead, but they are being challenged, and it's a big challenge too. The Dogs by just 12 points. The margin was 49 points at half time. Thanks to a blistering third term, it is now just two straight kicks. 12 points. The Dogs lead. A mighty comeback by the Saints, who were gone for all money, one would have thought at half time. That's not the case. It's 11-6 playing 9-6. And boys, we have got a contest, Dermot, on our hands, which is great. Bang, it was on, wasn't it? They didn't do it at the centre bounces as e either, uh, Brownie. They, they actually won it and held it in their forward line and around the ground very good with their foot skills. They were very good. They did get some four to half turnovers, which ended up in goals. But their kicking skills, they played with a lot more composure. They didn't rush. Let's go down to Moons. Do you want to talk about the Saints' forward half pressure, Moons? Well, we saw the first half, didn't we, with the Bulldogs and their pressure. It's an easy game sometimes, this one. If you bring the pressure, you bring the heat, you bring the tackling pressure, it's amazing what happens. You just see here, this is Bruce in the first couple of minutes, just bringing the pressure, bringing the tackle, gets a shot on goal, misses it, but that's, that's the intent. Then we see Bob here. This is their big ruckman, Hickey, bang. Fantastic tackle. A little bit embarrassing there for Bob, but he'll live with that. But again here, Loney brings in the pressure. Bruce, again, over the top. This is fantastic. We see Fisher here now setting up. The dogs are starting to panic. This is what happens when you bring pressure. Teams start to panic. Gets another inside 50. Get another contest. This is fantastic from the Saints. This is what you want to see. And then you see here right at the end of the side, bang. Big two tackles right on Bob Murphy. That's what you want to see from the Saints. That's why they got back into the game. Moons, while you got the mic uh, up high, last week the Doggies had a really emotional win and it was in wet weather. Will they be able to run the game out well here? Will that impact on them now? Look, I think all week they've been training uh, pretty nicely to make sure that they, when they get into this position, Dern, that they can. But right now, confidence is a wonderful thing and St Kilda have it. Two goals is the margin, favouring the Dogs, going into the final quarter. Cordy bouncing up and down before he challenges Billy Longer. No one able to get it out cleanly. Montagna gives it to Rewalt. The old stages towards centre wing. Joey goes again. Armitage is there. He pounces on top of it and he locks that ball up, at least tries to. Longer with strength tries to get it out to Dunstan. Well done, Not successful. It's Dalhouse who does get it out. Dalhouse is kicked towards the 50 and Boyd has plucked a catch. More a catch than a mark, really. 
this young man will go back from directly in front. He's going to be kicking from probably just outside 50. One of the things I notice about Tom Boyd is when he can get to the ball and it's dropping softly, his hands are very good. But if he, if he has to lead and charge hard at it, his hands get very stiff and hard and they bounce off in the opposite direction. And that kick has bounced away to the right. Has it been marked just inside or is it over? No, he's got it. So no, I'm probably saying it's, it's, it's a grab. We'll go back. Just he cast a sin there for St Kilda to allow that to happen. Nick Rewald had a, a good clear fly at the ball, but he just missed it completely coming across the front. Not one doggy standing in the uh, no. play online. Cordy kicks and Cordy goals. Well uh, gee, that's a big effort by the Ruckman. Ace Cordy gets his second goal for the year, but perhaps the most important one. It's a steadier, an earlier, early steadier for him. We have a look at it. Call us through it, Browning. You can see Rewild come across the front there. He just misjudged. He got a little bit under the footy. Billy Longer would be disappointed to get pushed under the ball like that. But good composure by young Cordy. On the left foot, a lot more players practice this at training now. The, left, the, the opposite foot uh, snap around the corner, if you'd like to call it that. Often in the past, you'd never see guys attempt that. But more and more now, you see him practicing that in the training. Even the big 200 centimetre ruckman. What about the coach? The new coach has said, Ace, you've never had a real good run at it. I'm handing you this on the plate. Let's see what you do with the number one ruck position. Yeah. And he's keeping Big Will out at the moment. As we go into it once again, Dunstan gets it out all too late. Ace Cordy picks himself up with McRae and they're ready to do battle again. It just looks like he's... He's freer. He's not anchored to a full forward zone and being a long target. He's running oh. around and getting involved. Dunstan caught one in the face, I think. He's OK. But that's going to come back. Well, he's got the height, uh, Cordy. He's 204 centimetres. Uh, so... That's around 6'8". Six, 6'8". Eight. Six, eight, it's big. So you'd want to be playing a fair bit of it, that time in the ruck. Very rarely you see a guy that tall be able to hold down a permanent full forward position. Oh, look at this run. Dalhouse had Johannesson running and he covered an enormous amount of territory before finding Goods. Now, Rewalt wasn't looking so Goods has just kicked from behind him up towards full forward. Big pack of players. Who's at the back? Suck it three for a goal. Honeychurch is the king down there. It's poor play by the uh, St Kilda defenders, but it was a really good contest. Jake Stringer jumped hard at the ball. The St Kilda guys allowed it over the back, and that is a cardinal sin for St Kilda defenders. Uh, for any defender, mind you, just see that Dempster tripped over. They all fell over, allowed the ball over the back. And, Gee. of course, the young, uh, the, the small forwards for the Bulldogs are always going to be first back there. The opposite view action... Yeah. Nick Revolt with his back to the play on of goods. He's just yes, yes. Out, of, out of tempo of league footy right at the moment. Might affect the way we look at him because we know he's so good, but gee, even for the greats, you miss three weeks. Yep. And the older you get, and the shorter the time you miss, the harder it is. So it's now a four goal margin. Armitage picks up another possession. Talia leads in the race on the outer side, but. Uh, Jack Stephen is quick. Billing is there to assist as well. He swings it round, putting the Saints inside 50. Hickey was forced to defend. And now it's Dixon who comes away to McRae. The dog's steadying with two early goals in this final quarter. And Dixon and Dala Dahl has been able to get the hands on the footy there. He struggled in that third quarter. Look at Johansson. Runs his full distance. Oh, don't slip again. He's run his full distance again. He yeah. does get the bounce. He spears in the pass. Magnificent. <laughs> I threw in a little mimi. <laughs> he used like the road, the road runner. But that was sensational. Down point. towards full forward. It's rushed over the line from behind. We love marks. We love the big marks, the goals. But isn't it exciting yes. when you see somebody just go, pick the ears back and go, catch me if you can. Stephen. Yeah, the, uh, the Western Bulldogs, the forwards, their eyes would be like dinner plates when uh, <laughs> Johannesson gets yeah, the ball off Murphy, yeah. or Murphy or Easton Wood. Nothing so, better when you play on the end of some really good halfback flankers doing as a forward. The lady goes here. Short. Fisher over the top to Armitage. He's got to use it up here. They've got yeah. players short to Nunes. He can kick at this lead. 
only got one target ahead. Got the 50. Got the 50. And Webb can't believe it. So this will bring him down probably inside the 50 metre line. Well, he, if, if he just lights on this it. up, oh. he's going short. Yeah, yeah. Hickey. I don't know. I reckon Nunes kicking from 53, 54 might be better than Hickey from this sharpish angle from 45. Better on though, Hickey, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. this confidence. Oh, terrific, he's kicked one. Terrific tackle in the uh, third quarter. We were uh, Bob Murphy trying to take him on. He's got his confidence up. He's kicked one. <laughs> you can always get one accidentally right, Sandy. Come on, fingers crossed. There's a ruckman. <laughs> and he's gone across the face. There's a big pack there, but a rush behind is the end result. <laughs> he, did, yeah, he did take down Bob at the end of the goal square. It wasn't that hard to kick from there. <laughs> He's a beautiful user of the footy, is uh, young Nunes. So, Murphy, with that characteristic touch, Fisher. Uh, well, Hickey came over the top. Could have almost spoiled his man there. Notice that the swap has gone back again. And we've got Dempster back yeah. onto Stringer and Fisher out the half back, even though Stringer's been dangerous because they want Fisher's creativity off half back. Rewalt to Dunstan to Schneider. Good spotter. Now Billings is out the back. Here he goes. Around the body onto that left foot. And he's well done. That's kicked good. the goal. That's well a great play. Yeah, he's a really dangerous little forward. He picked that up. He come really well. He gave himself a distance. Didn't get in too close to the contest. He's able to keep himself five metres away from it. His man... Direct opponent. Well, you watch got Josh far Bruce. Too close. They have to send two in the air to Josh Bruce because of his size. Yeah. Just see that. And, and also, Lucas Webb got drawn into that, didn't yeah. he? Because of Josh Bruce's presence, got drawn into that. And Nick Rebold was, was third man up at the boundary line throwing at half forward. If he's not Correct. up in the middle of the field, he'd probably run back to the yeah. goal square, takes his man with him, and contests that footy. Although he's just drifted into the forward line again now, Revolt. A couple of goals for Billings. 14 disposals. Uh, Pickett picks up another one. Just pumps it high up towards the 50. Stolen off the pack by Goods. Swings round onto that left boot. Towards oh, Stringer it. territory. That's really well done by Lumber. Crash the pack. Robertson. Oh! Ripped to the ground. Taken high. Dylan Robertson. Quickly gives it across towards Fisher. Getting a bit of sideways action out of the back line yep. now, the Saints. Here goes Montagna. A couple of bounces. And just steady. He's going back to Fisher. Towards centre wing. Oh, goods lurking. That ball's going to be held in there. Just wonder whether uh, the Bulldogs are going to tire a little bit. Of course, they had that tough game against Sydney last week. The wet, and they're really a man down with Kobe Stevens having to stay out on the field. So the rotations are affected. That's tough. That's hard for you then. Dunstan. Took the goal earlier. Clever little tap to Schneider from Hickey. Draws the player. Gives it off to Billings, who should have oh. kicked the goal or gone into the man in the square. He did neither. You see Richo there, and he's, he'd be reluctant to send the runner out and say, mate, you know you had two better options than the one you took. You don't want to uh, you know, cruel the kid now. He'll know. Hunter came on as the sub for Clay Smith. Cordy had it, and he, he lost it for a moment. Then he, his second effort was brilliant with the tackle. Dixon, a hurried left foot kick towards centre wing. Clash of bodies. Pick and come storming through. Gives it off to Boyd. Boyd's little chip shit is good. Oh, he can go over the top to Fletcher Roberts. Good Fletcher's man. alone, but he couldn't see him. Really now they've got him. Really well done by Robert. But that kick's going to be too far. A oh, great opportunity going begging there. I'll, I'll join him with Brownie there. Really well manned on the mark by Robert. And he saw him, but he didn't get back Robert. quick enough, and he manned the mark up so well, it would have been a loft shot and would have been picked, picked oh. off. Well, Dunstan has just kicked it behind. He's kicked it into the post. <laughs> into the post. <laughs> the post for the dogs. They're big, those posts. <laughs> <laughs> to Nunes, back into play. They actually are getting bigger. <laughs> what they were 20 years ago. Out of sight of the ground. And Boyd affects the sport. Sees it over the line. At least that was an accident. I remember one day that 
Here it is here. I'll just see, uh, you know, the post. The post actually saved him. <laughs> he would have been out of bounds full. One day, Mel Michael kicked a goal for the opposition from right. 30 <laughs> metres out. Yeah. Just turned around and went bang, put it through. Wasn't that to say to you, but stop missing him? Stop missing him down the <laughs> other end. He was that frustrated. The Montagna hand pass, okay. But uh, trouble for Armitage on that outer side. He's manhandled over the line. 13 minutes remaining, so time not really a factor yet. The Saints are three goals down. They need the next one. And they've got a chance through Armitage. A hand pass, it was a real tester. McKenzie goes long up towards the square. Talia got a hand to it. Off hands, Billings! This is getting dangerous, young Jack Billings. They want to tighten up at the ground level. What's happening now also is Revolt has drifted back into the forward line, but when he went out, Talia went over onto Josh Bruce. Now that Revolt's back in there, he's getting young Roberts. Roberts, yes. So expect him to get on the end of a few now, because he might just be a bit smart for the kid. Yeah, Hannison puts it back into play. He, he's really testing him with his running power, isn't he? Yeah, yeah Revolt went on about 100 metre. Really hard sprint, and Fletcher Roberts was struggling to be able to keep up. Dogs need to do something with Armitage at these stoppages at the moment. He is tearing through them. Yeah. It's just a bull, isn't he? A rough forty possession day, down. eight clearances. Yeah. He's an absolute star. Rovat to centre wing. Oh, that's an excellent mark taken by Dempster. First quarter, he thumps that, but after that third quarter, oh, that's overcooked. Oh. Trouble here, McRae. Gives it back, Dixon. Tory Dixon goes back to McRae once again. Rewalt still running, but he gets his kick. Down towards Stringer. Couldn't claim it cleanly, now has to go again. Well done by Delaney, gets it off to Geary. Geary goes to Rewalt on centre wing almost. Just Jake Stringer just looks like he's tiring a bit down yeah. forward. Couldn't quite get there on the lead. Well, it's a high-pressure game he yeah. plays with the amount of running he goes back towards goal. Just feeling into his groin area. Remember last week he came off yes. with a little niggling feel? Yep, he, he did. might be just about reaching the end of his running capacity today as well. Yeah, that's a good point. He did come off last week. A slight niggle. Bontempelli, that was a falcon. <laughs> uh, back towards half-back. Uh, could have been holding on there. Well, it is, but he was perhaps a little lucky, but he'll take it, Jimmy Webster. He can kick it, the boy. Goes short. That's OK. And here are the young guns blazing away again. Wow. Look at that. How good is that? Young Jack Billings, hasn't he? Just turned it on. Well, he's now got three, and we are back to a couple of kicks. This, if you had said to me previous, prior to round one, going to turn up at a doggy St Kilda game in round six. And in, in the last ten minutes of the match, you're going to be sitting on the edge of the seat. I'd say, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. You've had, had a check. You've had too much today. <laughs> this is a fantastic game. Good pressure. Enough rock and roll to go from side to side. Good finish, too. So it's now actually under two straight kicks. St Kilda kick two goals, they lead. They got Stringer out there. They've got thrown rough head forward, the Bulldogs. Oh, it's going to be brought back. It's amazing. It goes back to 2008 to 2010 when both these teams were playing in prelims. Yeah. With the talent that they've got, give it a couple of years, we'll be seeing them straight back in there, won't we? And Kobe Stevens is on the bench near to you, Moose. Do you risk your rotation <laughs> to get back well. on there? Stringer. Lama wins it. Sorry, sorry, Sam. Stringer and Stevens oh. right there. Maybe... We certainly know that Stevens carry injury. Maybe Stringer might be as well. Schneider! Dribble kick almost. Longer goes back towards Schneider. Good taken point. out. Hickey in trouble. He dropped it. Managed to just get a toe poke to it. Didn't have a lot of distance about it. Bontempelli, an underground hand pass. Cranberry tries to pick up the footy, but he can't steal it. He goes to ground, and there'll be a ball up. You mentioned Bontempelli before there, Sandy. He's been pretty well held today, just uh, up for his 11th position there, Stringer and Stevens on the bench, they need them both out on the ground, but it looks like they're hurting a bit. That was a beautiful tap, and Pickin kicks it long, Tory Dixon if he can get clear, Dempster might be the man to catch, Dixon goes again, Dempster goes to ground, Fisher's hand passes Aaron, 
It slips away from Dempster. He's up again. Gets the hand pass clear. Gary's under the pump. Gets a hurry kick back towards Armitage and he takes the mark. Now the Saints are off. Tucks it under his arm. Two bounces. Tries to draw the player in Murphy. Goes over the top to Montagna. Joey goes back again to Armitage. Wants to get onto that left boot. Eventually decides on the hand pass. Across to Billings. Little chip is good. The spoil was even better. And Pickett gets a high ball. Clearing once more to centre wing. Boy, this has gone up a notch yet again. Good if that's boy. possible. Montagna, excellently done by McKenzie. Now an opportunity for Webster. Jimmy's kick is high and long. Inside 50. Big pack of players towards the boundary line. And it's going to be taken over. We've got to throw in. Well, I'll tell you what, they, they need to... Uh try and save the game near the Bulldogs because their forwards can't move. No, they're they're, absolutely they're, they're out, out on their feet down here at the moment, the boys. Jakey String has just come back on. How good was the keep Daniel McKenzie in yeah. that contest? And talking about contest, look at Armitage, 42 on the game already. And still with a chance. The Dogs' defence feeling the pressure. They come out through Bontempelli. Sweeps a hand pass over to McRae. McRae needs someone wide. He's got him in the form of Goods. Goods gives it back to Pickin. He's knocked up. Getty kicks as well. Longer and Cordy. The two big men go at it. Longer wins. He gives it to Fisher. He pokes it out wide. What towards Sinclair. Important kick. If he misses that target, that's coming back inside. Sinclair goes down the line to Hickey. Bruce has led to the pocket. That's left only small men further on down the line. Good option. Stephen. Almost a, a little nine-iron chip, but it's going to be OK. Towards Loney, who's got one to his name at the moment. He's comfortable on this side of the ground, yeah. this kid. Well, he's going for number four. Yeah, he's... The Jacks are doing it for the Saints at the moment. Another short entry inside 50. The Western Bulldogs players, they're really tired, so they're just getting back in defence. They're, they're not they're able to man up these short kicks. This is a big game kick. of last week is having an effect now. Yeah, you might be right, Deming. This is a big kick going to the top of the square. Oh, oh that's <laughs> another one. <laughs> they couldn't, could they? This is unbelievable. Oh, Richo's having heart palpitations. <laughs> and the Saints fans have gone mad. Oh, they've got to make an animal enclosure here as well, I reckon, Sandy. <laughs> Good play. They're getting desperate. The Western Bulldogs players are all jumping in the footy. And some of the, and the St Kilda crumbers are staying down at ground level. You see here, young Jack Sinclair stays at ground level, lands it. Even his man, Bottom Pally there, jumps oh, yeah. the ball too many. Thank you very much. He give gift wrap there for him. He looks like he could have been playing the Oz kick at half time. Yeah. <laughs> so young, Jack, young Jack Sinclair. Jack's got two now. And there is a kick in it. Socket off the ground by Cordy. Down towards Hunter. He couldn't take it cleanly. Comes back to Cordy again. A little too swift for Bontempelli. He goes to ground. Turnover occurs. Armitage has got it. Four goes on to the left boot. Kick is a beauty. Hickey takes the mark. It's been good for him. Everything running with the Saints at the moment. He goes short again. And guess who? Another Jack. Loney takes the mark inside 50. He's hard work keeping up with all those Jacks, Sandy. Jack, Loney, <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Stephen. They're everywhere. Sinclair. I remember when Jack Hamilton was the only <laughs> Jack in the league. <laughs> now they're everywhere. Dear old Jack. Was up with a jack at 5 a.m. this morning too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Rewald couldn't complete the mark. And uh, an umpire almost losing the pee from the whistle. That was that was my son Jack Brown, who's two years old. I wasn't out of the nightclub at right. five in the morning, Sandy, just to clarify. Pleased <laughs> to hear that Brownie. Throwing in the right forward pocket. St Kilda have done the bulk of the attacking. Woods ha uh, Goods hand passes Errant. It opens the door for Jack Stephen. He steadies. Centering ball. They need a mark. They're not going to get it. Eastern Wood takes a timely one with seven minutes on the clock. They've got no run now. There is nobody coming from behind or even just... A, should have even gone backwards to look like Webb who was there. So everything now is going to be a... Mark oh, kick, yeah. mark kick, yeah. target. He's, they've got nothing ahead. He's done a 360 hunter, and then he's gone short to roughhead. Where all the forwards have been pushed up right up the ground there, Dave. So they're all out of position at the moment. Finally, they've got uh, a couple of couple of down the line now. Cordy, 
Boyd comes. Boyd's not going to make this. Cordy. Oh, well done. Remember the Saints went down Boyd. to Essendon by two points last week in a thriller that perhaps they should have won. They're very small forward of the footy, so if they can get the ball onto the ground, apart from Boyd as a target, and they can get a little bit of ground level. No, they've got Here's a go. Bruce is away. Good option. Just goes across the ground to Stephen. Spearing pass is a little too much on it, I'm afraid. And Wood takes the mark. They don't have the pace to hurt St Kilda on the rebound, no, no. whereas they've been number one for doing that this season. They've run out of legs, literally run out of forward, forward run. As soon as Wood took that mark, everybody just said, slow it down for the dogs. They are completely yeah. out of the minute. And yeah, Henderson did that, you could see. As Geary gets back on it, he'll be first there. Gives it off to Delaney. Delaney finds Fisher. Fisher, proppy hand pass. Mackenzie, that's a tough one for you, my friend. And unimpressed as he sees it go over the line. They've been able to put a fair bit of work into our Eastern Wood. Robert Murphy, particularly, who have struggled to get the hands on in the second half. They're the main prime movers off half back. That's why the Bulldogs can't get any ball flow and uncontested possession. Cordy. Uh, longer cop one, but he's okay. Well, now Stephen takes it away from Dunstan. Stephen's kick goes down the line. It's hammered towards the boundary line by Easton Wood and over. It's a good result there for St Kilda. They reset here. Just look a lot more energy around the footy at the moment. And they've been able to extract it from the clearances by short handballs and then open up a free kicker. Five points the margin. Rewalt plucks it out of the air. Stephen's taken high. Wink it's around there, no, it's that one. He plays on. The kick is good. That is a wonderful kick, and Hickey takes the mark oh, for the game. <laughs> for the lead. Well, he's been good forward. As you said, Sandy. <laughs> he's kicked one. He's kicked one, so he's got his confidence up. <laughs> But he's missed one as well. <laughs> we don't mention that. Well, it's, a, it's a bad distance to this one. Derby, so it's just, uh... <laughs> You're giving him every reason to miss, Brownie. These are so, the nervous distances. You should kick him. What a game. This for the lead after trailing by 49 points. The goal umpire barely moves. Saints hit the front. I'm struggling to actually believe this yes. Brownie this is incredible in the first half the doggies were as good as any team I've seen this year well they play a, it, now here's the stoppage Nick Rewald goes up there grabs it out of the ruck really well done contentious free kick but I think this has been the story of the second half for St Kilda is the way they've used the ball inside 50 you see Jack Stephen just changed his mind at the last second finds Tom Hickey Nice mark overhead, goes back and kicks a big pressure goal to put him in front for the first time today, I believe, Sandy. Yep. And we're looking at perhaps the third biggest comeback from half time ever. Out of the middle. Bontempelli, that ain't something the dogs. Dixon has it fisted away. Waiting down was Dalhouse. He's still got something in those little legs. He keeps them pumping and he goes in towards the pocket and Stringer was a target, but he couldn't take the mark. The Saints now with their tails up, sensing something perhaps after the disappointment of last week. Dogs can't hold it in their forward line now. The Saints are getting it out of there. Not easily, but they're working really hard, but they are getting it out each and every time. Gary. Great play by Dallas. Yeah, he did well to get there in time and affect the spoil. He went straight past Rewald there. They need to really attack now, obviously, the Bulldogs. They need to be aggressive in their defence like they were in the first half. This forces the Dogs to attack now. Three and three-quarter minutes remaining. Bontempelli got a left hand to it. McRae goes around the boundary line. But they're a tired lot. That's a ripping tackle, however, by Honeychurch. The problem is, Sandy, they're so tired, the Bulldogs, they can't press in. When the ball goes into their forward 50, their midfielders are tired. They just can't press in and get the numbers to where the ball is. St Kilda are outnumbering, and they're able to build uh, from their defensive 50 all the way down the other end. Watch Fontenpelli. Here he goes. Good. Was he lagged? No, said the umpire. And Dempster has taken over the line. Was it on the fall? Ooh. So he's got it. Schneider's in trouble. I think that possibly more than cramp. Here's the incident. 
So a little bit of relief for the Saints as they go back to the centre wing area. They've got the numbers here. Armitage yet again has knocked up getting it. Rewalt tumbling it. Oh, Wood slipped at the crucial stage. Billings is at the back. Billings is 45 out. He steadies. Low. Keeps it low and kicks the goal. This is phenomenal. How good's this kid, though? Billings has got four. <laughs> well done, <Wow>. Richo. <laughs> <laughs> And St Kilda lead by seven points. Now, Leggy Beveridge has got his work cut out. Now, he has to find someone to run. Now, even if he has to get somebody out of a position yeah. uncomfortable in the middle, uncomfortable off half-back, he's got to get some run into his team. They need to get maybe a Joe Anderson, uh, Joe Anderson into the centre square here just to provide some life there. All the other guys are really struggling. Bottom Pally struggled to get his hands on the footy. He looks out of juice. They've put Cranery in there now as a forward. So a big body clearance player. We know he can get up and down the field. Well, they've got three minutes to try and do something here. The dog's down by seven points. Here goes Bontempelli. Just hitting hope as he kicks it up the wall to the 50-metre line. Charging through but unable to take it cleanly was Rovat. Nunes is at the bottom of the pack. And he's got a couple of teammates there with him, including Fisher. And we'll have a ball up. Meanwhile, David Armitage has scampered up to 45 possessions. Oh, been fantastic. And Nick Rewald's gone as a loose man in defence now, trying to block up the Bulldogs' forward line. From the bounce, there's been a Shepherd. free kick picked up for Shepard, and it's going against St Kilda. He's got a fair leg, but I don't think he'll kick it this far. I don't think so. Yeah, he can't kick it long because Nick Rewald's there on his own. Kick a torpedo. He's going to have a go at it. It's going to be close. He'll go into the square and thump it over the back. Yeah, that was a bad decision. If you're going to kick it long, kick it to the top of the goal square. Yeah. Uh, that was too easy for the St Kilda defenders and uh, Ruckman and Nick Rewald to punch that ball through. Bad decision. Either go short or go to the top of the goal square. One straight kick the difference. Are we looking at a draw? Goes to his mate. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Very well. Up towards 20 possessions. First game back. He's worked his way into the game, yeah. hasn't he? Just tries to push it up towards centre wing. Talia is at the back. Affects the hand pass. Could have gone inboard. Back again it goes to Taylor. And he's going to lose it here if he's not careful. They are. Stephen gives it away. Standing start, it's pumped up towards the half forward line, and here he is again, the man of the moment, Jackie Boy Billings. You love him already, don't you? I do, <laughs> I do. Great to see youngsters coming through and watching their progress. He goes back to his skipper, and in turns goes to Jack Stephen. We've got 90 seconds to go, one goal, could we get a draw? <laughs> Fisher. 20 games, Jack Billings, but oh, yeah. what a sensational game he's played, especially Armitage, in the second half. Armitage and Stephen have had, what, 76 between them? And here's another one for Jack Stephen. Well, it's just containment now. They've gone into shutdown mode with one minute and one second remaining. Fisher's got the football. It's called to go now. Goes down the line on the outer wing to a big pack. Dogs have got Johannesson at the back. Gets onto a torp and goes down towards left half forward. There's a tired Bontempelli. Sees it go out on the full. What they all rest bite for the Saints. What they did, they milked 45 seconds off yeah. the clock when a minute and a half was remaining. So back it goes towards centre wing. There's a big mark. Tell you what, the big man, Longer and Hickey. Hickey. Yeah. Especially Hickey right. being very good in the second half. Good mark. That's what you want from your big man. Yeah. He kicks up towards half forward. No mark taken. Oh, Ruffhead's absolutely exhausted. Hickey goes short. Bruce takes the mark and he can shut this game right up. Game over. He's got 20 seconds before he's got to get on the runway. Game over. Yeah. Because Just like in American football, they can count down the clock now. Saints, that was brilliant. We'll stay for his shot and the song, of course. The Saints have got up off the canvas and have scored an unlikely but heroic win. How good was that?
can Bruce finish it off? Has just the one to his name today. He goes across the face of goal, pops Gosh. through a behind. Gosh, that's a handy point. Yeah. <laughs> it matters not, wow, wow. because the Saints, incredibly, have won an absolute thriller by seven points, 14-10 to 13-9. They've had some real close ones, some real close ones this season so far. They're bound to get one sooner or later, but they just hung in there in that first quarter, Brownie. 20 inside 50s, and they only coughed up three goals, the Saints backmen. And you could argue that that there has impacted at this end of the game. 14 shots, yeah. the Doggies had 10 goals for at halftime from 40 entries. If you want to take it out to the first half, the back line stood up for the Saints in the first half when they were under siege. And then when they were able to, with fitness, run over the top against the wounded Doggies, yeah. put the score on the board. What a brilliant game of footy. And Cam Mooney is down there with one of the young architects, Moons. Oh, man, I have got one of the absolute stars, Jack. That was an incredible last quarter. Talk us through that one. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I just got a bit lucky. All the guys in the midfield and down back did awesome. And, um, yeah, we'll just... Yeah, trying to work hard in front of the ball, and luckily um, we all played well in that last quarter. So yeah, great to get the win. Mate, go back to that. But that last half was incredible. The first half was terrible. We eight goals down, and then all of a sudden you just completely turned around. What was said at half time? Um, not really. Obviously, really disappointing. And Richo, Richo just came in and said, "I'm not going to say anything." Like we come out in the second half and just see what um, this footy club means to you. And um, Yes, so it was good we came out and responded, so yeah, it was awesome. That's amazing. It's an amazing feeling, isn't it, for a young group. You're building, you're building, and you do have a great win like that. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know, we've been pretty solid this season, but um, we've had you know, patches where we haven't really stuck it all together, and it's like that first half today, but yeah, it was good to uh, get the win in the end. Mate, you're on your way up, buddy. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Well <laughs> Got to say, we had a shot of Alan Richardson there, and we, we talked about it. That is a really brave coaching move to take one of the all-time great forwards and right. pop him on the wing. Yeah. Yes. Take take one of the greats of our game and put him on the wing. Yeah. And look at Richard. He won't care about what he's done. No, he's he'd, be, the boys. he'd be so proud of this young group. And it really opened, opened things up. Look, guy, we got, here's a man, David Armitage. Uh, the Cam Mooney is able to get 45. Of an interview. Yeah. 45 pos possessions. What an up a great game. And he started to use the ball better in the second half. Moons. Dave, mate, have a listen to this. This is amazing. Isn't it? It's been a bit of a lean period for you guys, but shown some faith in these young fellas over the last couple of years and almost makes it worth it today, doesn't it? Mate, incredible. Incredible win, especially being down by, you know, seven goals or whatever we were. We uh, went out half time and Richo basically said, just show us what you got. All you got to do is get back to winning the footy. Been hard and tough and hard to play against. And we did that for the next uh, hour and we ended up getting the result, mate. This is an incredible win. Well, you guys have been building for this over the last couple of weeks, haven't you? Yeah, we have. We have. We've, uh, you know, last week we gave that effort as well. We gave it four quarters, didn't get over the line. But we know the effort gives you the best opportunity to win. So, terrific, terrific football. Well, how good are some of your young kids? It's fantastic. I mean, the last quarter, credit to Jackie Billings, Jackie Sinclair. Mate, they're only kids, and yeah. that composure they got to hit the target, to finish off, you can't teach that. It's incredible. Dave, go and sing this song, buddy. Thanks, man. Cheers, buddy. And those 45 disposals uh, by David Armitage is the most by any player so far this year. Hardly surprising as he raises his arm in the air and hits to his teammates. He's absolutely ecstatic. And that was the best on-ground performance by... David Armitage. Yeah, it was. And uh, he, he's, uh, the way he used the ball in the second half was uh, probably symbolised the way St Kilda used the ball in the second half because uh, he turned the ball over a lot in the first first half, David Armitage, but he was terrific. He got 100% kicking efficiency in that third quarter. And the Sainers guys, have a look at him going off there. High yeah. five in the crowd. This is one of the best wins St Kilda have had for quite a number of years, probably since those grand final years when they were in to back grand finals of course there's young Jack Billings what a star but they'll be really happy the way they went about it and Alan Richardson asked for a better effort in the second half they certainly brought that but they also brought some really good composure with the footy at the end of the day the Bulldogs were out on their legs they were out out on their feet sorry uh, they just couldn't keep up with the juggernaut 12 goals to three in the second half for the Saints